Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, the D and What If, with another fanfiction. This is the second part of What If Deku had multiple personas wreaking havoc in secret. All credits for this video go to their respective authors. So please support the real author. Check out the link in the description for more details. Please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. All for one grits his teeth and slams his fist down on the desk splintering the wood easily. He takes a deep breath trying to compose himself. He doesn't yell. All for one doesn't yell. Sir, Kirajiri tries to speak but all for one holds up a hand. All for one closes his eyes and sighs do you know how much time? Energy and money I invested in Shigaraki Tamura. Kirajiri doesn't answer, which is a smart choice. So much. He turns to his Namu assistant with a tense smile. Fix this. Now, the man bows yes master. I will return Shigaraki Tamura to you. In a matter of minutes Kirajiri had broken into the maximum security prison in which they were holding the boy. And well, Shigaraki is returned. But it was wrong. So wrong. WH he notices his raised tone and lowers it calmly who did this Tamura. The blue-haired young man sits on the couch cautiously touching the throw pillow with all five fingers with some kind of wonder in his eyes. I I didn't see them master, they were invisible. All for one's eye twitches we'll have to make use of our person inside then. He says with barely contained rage. Kirajiri nods and dissipates in an instant to do his job. Tamira looks more uncomfortable with Kirajiri gone and all for one looks over the man. There's really not much use for him to work now. He could kill him, but that wouldn't be useful either. His mouth quirks into a smirk. That may work very well. He stands up and watches as his ex-student flinches. He places his hand on the young man's shoulder and breathes out lightly. He snaps his fingers and Kirajiri returns. Yes sir, return him to the prison. Leave no trace. Sir, he turns to the Nama was I unclear. No sir, he narrows his eyes and looks over the man. Good. Ayama's stomach is in knots, and this time it isn't because of his hand-me-down quirk. He's alone in his room with eyes sore from crying and a trash bin next to him reeking of vomit. It's not that bad. He tries to convince himself. He just needs to figure out who was at the USJ on Friday. Why on earth the higher-ups want that? He has no idea, but it's gotta be important if they're risking sending him in. So he takes a breath and prepares for Monday. He'll have to do some snooping. Izuku sits next to a racer's bed. The room is stuffy and white and the chair he's sitting on is very uncomfortable. But he won't leave. He listens as the man breathes in and out aided by a bunch of tubes and machinery. He sighs and pulls out his notebook. I've heard that people in comas sometimes hear what's going on outside. There's no response. Izuku's heart constricts and he feels silly for hoping that the man would awaken after a single sentence. So I'm going to read you a page of my journal. One day at the Evergreen you asked me what I write in here, so I guess now you'll find out. Lucky you, huh? He tries to sound optimistic just in case a racer can actually hear him. He opens to the first page and smiles with nostalgia. Oh this was written just after I met you. He takes a breath and begins reading. A pro hero came by today. His name is Eraserhead and he's underground so no one knows too much about him, but today I found something out. He drinks black coffee. Tenya told me that it's not an odd trait and that it's not worth writing down but who cares, I think it's cool. I think his quirk works based on eye contact. Because he's always within view of villains when he takes them down. He basically fights quirkless, it's so incredible. I wonder if Kakin knows that there's a hero like Eraserhead. That would be a big hit to his ego haha. He finishes reading and smiles. I guess now Kakin knows, doesn't he? Izuku comments. It's strange reading entries from years ago. Look at us now. He glances down at the comatose man and winces look at us now. About an hour later Shinzo Hitoshi comes by. It's a surprise for sure, but a welcome one. Izuku looks up and smiles at the boy. Well, well, if it isn't my partner in crime. Shinzo sits on the infirmary chair next to Izuku. Your partner in crime got detention over your favor. Izuku grins figures. Nedzu doesn't like to be outsmarted after all. Shinzo looks at the unconscious man does this teacher being injured have anything to do with your favor? He asks with guilt lacing his tone. Izuku's smile falls. It's what the favor was trying to prevent. He tucks a strand of hair behind his ear casually it didn't work as well as I'd wanted. Obviously. Shinzo hums well I don't know what on earth happened to you after I saw you last. But it's clear it wasn't good. The purple-haired teen scans the small freckled boy. What's that supposed to mean? Izuku asks, affronted. Shinzo smirks it means you look like shit vent boy. How long has it been since you've slept? I'll have you know I was unconscious for hours. He says defensively. Shinzo shakes his head with a chuckle. That's not the same as sleeping. The boy offers him a hand to stand up which Izuku takes gratefully. Izuku smiles at his new friend fair. Say, wanna meet the cats? If you have time I mean. Shinzo smiles in return I'd like that. The two of them walk into the cafe where there's the usual hubbub of customers and Izuku's employees. Izuku spots Hades hiding under a couch and points him out to Shinzo. 
There's the moody fucker. He says as he watches Shino's eyes go wide. Oh my god. He pets the dark cat and to Izuku's surprise the cat doesn't immediately go to scratch the boy. Instead he kinda just accepts the human's affection reluctantly. Huh. He likes you, that's pretty rare. Izuku leans against the wall as he watches the boy play with the cat. Toga who'd been bringing table for their lattes walked over to the boys. No way. Hades won't even let me touch him. Much less play with him. She pouts. Izuku smiles. Seems like Aizawa and Shinzo have the magic touch. Toga laughs as she holds out her hand for the lavender hair boy to shake. Hi. I work at Evergreen. Do you like blood? To his credit Shinzo answers her question I mean. I like the blood that keeps me alive. Himiko grins that's good enough for me. Izuku introduces the two to each other. Toga Himiko, meet Shinzo Hitoshi. Shinzo, meet Toga. Toga jumps with excitement wonderful. Are you a new employee? Shinzo shakes his head as Izuku shrugs. The two look at each other and Izuku breaks the awkward silence. We always need new employees, and... He scans the boy top to bottom something tells me you're not unfamiliar with obscene amounts of caffeine. Shinzo laughs you'd be right. And you know what? I've been needing an after-school job. He glances around the cafe. And you can't get much better than cats and coffee. Izuku pumps his with glee fuck yeah. He runs to the back as he grabs an apron and runs back to the pair. He places the apron around Shinzo's neck and grins before turning to the customers, who, for the most part, are accustomed to Izuku's weird habits. We've got a new employee. He shouts out far too loudly. The regulars cheer, and there are a few cameras recording. No doubt this will be viral in a matter of hours. Izuku uncaps a sharpie and writes Shinzo Hitoshi on his apron, and beneath it in silly lettering the cat man. Toga, who has her own nickname on her apron, high-fives the boy as she leads him to the back to introduce him to the other employees. Izuku grins. Slowly but surely this place is starting to feel like home again. He feels the old tattered photograph in his pocket and pulls it out. He looks at his mom's smiling face, forever frozen in time. He sighs as he pockets the picture once more. Hey Zu, get your ass over here. Himi calls from the back and Izuku smiles. Coming. Shinzo is. Overwhelmed. This whole entire day has been a shitstorm and he doesn't quite know how he got here. And by here he means in the vents of the Evergreen Cafe. The blood girl, Toga, called it a rite of passage for new employees while a scarred man with the nickname Burnt Toast called it bullshit. But either way here he is with a new job he got while meeting new people. I don't know how to get out of here. He yells panic seeping into his voice. Hiroraka, a girl he recognizes from UA, shouts words of encouragement while the scarred man just laughs. Screw you. He shouts back. Ew. The new kid has a backbone. He can basically hear the smirk in the man's voice. Izuku unscrews the vent and pokes his head in and smiles. Shinzo sighs you know I preferred things how they were 12 hours ago, when you were in the vents and I was in peace on the ground. He snarks to the boy who just grins wider. I was throwing rocks in your food. There was no peace. He offers a hand to help Shinzo out, which he takes. Shinzo lands on the ground with a sigh of relief floor. My old friend, how I've missed you. He exclaims dramatically. Izuku giggles so. Who wants to teach the fresh meat the wonderful art of customer service? Early, very early, in the morning, maybe 3 or 4 a.m., after the cafe closed and Toga went to bed Izuku snuck out. For the first time in years he went out without his suit or his mask. He leapt from rooftop to rooftop wearing his street clothes and his classic red shoes as well as his backpack. He looked over his shoulder, grateful to see nobody around as he snuck into UA. The gate led him through thanks to Nezu, and he entered the dark building quietly. It was weird to be here at night after weeks of coming here while kids stormed the halls. His footsteps seemed too loud in contrast to the quiet night. All the lights were off until he reached the recovery girl's office. The light escaped from underneath the door and Izuku pushed it open hesitantly. Luckily for him, recovery girl was nowhere to be found. So he sneaks into the stuffy room he was in hours ago. He sees Aizawa still unconscious and he sighs. He sits in the chair. And sits. And sits. For hours. Shouta Aizawa wakes from his coma at 5.23 in the morning. The first thing he sees is light. Bright, obnoxious, light. He looks around his surroundings to find. To his shock. One Izuku Midoriya fast asleep on a chair a few feet from his bed. His head is aching like a motherfucker so he stands to ask where recovery girl is. He leans up to try and drags himself out of his hospital bed. But that exact second is when Izuku wakes up. He mutters some nonsense as he rubs his eyes with exhaustion. The moment he notices the man he brightens instantly. Mr. Aizawa. He exclaims. Aizawa winces at his volume. Hey kid. Izuku's voice drops to a whisper. Oh sorry. You probably have a headache don't you? Aizawa nods. Oh well I'm so glad you're awake. Oh it's Saturday morning by the way. The boy glances down at his watch. It's 5.30. What happened? He asks hazily. And why are you here? It's not a school day. I don't. His question fades away as he looks to the boy in confusion. Izuku hums makes sense. You don't remember much. Your head got pretty hurt. He scratches the back of his neck anxiously I don't think I'm a reliable narrator though. 
You'll have to ask someone else. Izuku stands up and walks swiftly out the door glad you're up eraser. He shouts as he runs down the hallway leaving Aizawa alone in his hospital room. That brat just avoided all of my questions. Aizawa was tired. The last thing he remembered before everything became blurry was stepping into the USJ. It clearly didn't go well, considering the fact that Shouta is in the infirmary. Plus why was Izuku there? To get answers to his questions he hobbled over to Nenzu's office. Recovery girl was not happy with him getting up and walking around but Shouta has never claimed to be a patient man. He opens the door and sees the rat discussing something with all of the other teachers who were at the USJ. Oh, Aizawa. We were just going over yesterday's incident. Aizawa looks at his friend Nimuri. She's biting her nails anxiously. Oh, this is one of those talks. He listens and listens as Nezu tells an obviously heavily edited version of events. His stomach tightened the moment Izuku's name was brought up and it only got worse from there. But how did he get that information? Aizawa asks Nezu. He is a skilled hacker he could've. Bullshit. You're hiding something, Nezu. Something is wrong. This is my kid we're talking about. He shouted grimaces as his injury flares up harshly. He takes a deep breath before continuing. You need to tell me. He says threateningly hoping that the rat will budge and give him something, anything. But Nezu stays composed. If there was relevant information, I would have shared it. Anything you don't know, you don't know for a reason. Shouta grits his teeth before standing up. Fine, I guess I'll just find it out myself. He walks to the door and slams it in his boss's face. Monday morning in class 1A there were tons of theories as to why Aizawa was late. Mina betted that he had gotten a woman knocked up and that now he was meeting his baby that was born out of wedlock. She thinks that he has fallen in love with this mystery woman and that he will never return to UA again. Siro thinks that he got absolutely wasted over the weekend and that he's at home vomiting over his toilet. Bakugu yells that the rest of them are all idiots and that he probably got injured doing hero work. He was right, of course, but nobody believed him. You're just not imaginative enough, Bikubro. Kirishima says before turning to Todoroki who has been sketching in his notebook during the whole conversation why do you think Mr. Aizawa is late Todoroki? Todoroki looks up seriously. Okay, I have my theory. He shows the class's notebook which they all gather around. Everyone knows Mr. Aizawa can look like a caterpillar sometimes, right? The class nods as the dual-colored boy goes on. And caterpillars turn into chrysalis. What if, and stay with me here, Aizawa is a butterfly. He finishes his speech by pointing at his sketch of a butterfly on his notebook. That's so smart. Denki gasps. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Bakugu kicks Todoroki in the leg and I grew up with Deku. Hearing this Izuku looks up from his desk hey. I had good theories. Bakugu rolls his eyes like the one about how present Mike swallowed a megaphone and that's how his quirk works. For your information, that has never been disproved. Izuku states matter-of-factly. It could still be true. Besides going back to a racer, I bet he's just sick or something, we shouldn't worry. And just that second, as if purposefully timed to shock people, Aizawa Shouta walks in the classroom with a heavily bandaged head. Take your seats. He announces like he doesn't have 10 pounds of gauze wrapped around his skull. Before anyone can ask any questions Mr. Aizawa tells the class a half-truth. I got hurt doing hero work. In the back Mina pays Bakugu some money for the bet. I am fine. It is none of your business and I will be saying no more than this. Anyway, let's continue with our lesson from Friday. Izuku feels Aizawa's eyes on him throughout the lesson. It's obvious that he got some answers from Nezu over the weekend, but not enough to satisfy him. While the class gets started on a worksheet Aizawa calls him up to his desk. The class is watching like vultures waiting for gossip. Izuku sighs and walks up to him. What's up sir? Aizawa's eyes narrow as he tries to figure out what secrets the boy is keeping. I heard something over the weekend. Izuku raises his eyebrows with a smile. Oh, was it about the USJ? Aizawa tilts his head it was indeed. What on earth were you thinking? He hisses under his breath. Immediately class 1A is listening in. They make it painfully obvious but it's clear Aizawa doesn't care. That was so reckless Midoriya. Izuku smiles I know, but I couldn't let it be. Aizawa scowls next time you need to. We had it handled. Well obviously you didn't sir. Izuku exclaims. In case you didn't notice you have a gigantic bandage around your head. I like to think that your injury is better because of my interference. This isn't about my well-being, it's about yours. The man shouts. If it went wrong what would have happened to Toga? HM. The cats. The evergreen. He sighs. You have people that care, kid. The class watches the interaction with bated breath. Izuku crosses his arms ignoring the tears welling up in his eyes. Well what about Eriser? How do you know? What about Kayama? Yamada. Izuku grabs his backpack and starts to walk out of the door. What about me? He lets that sink in before finishing his statement. You have people that care to erase her. He slams the door shut as he leaves. A moment after Izuku left Bakugu follows. Aizawa doesn't even try to stop him. Aizawa looks at the slammed door and sighs softly. He looks to the class who is waiting for his reaction. 
What? Get your work done. Ayama's heart beats in his chest. Shit, shit, shit. Izuku Midoriya was at the USJ. There's always been something a little weird about him, but Yuga had just assumed he was a little eccentric, so he thinks over his options. He could report this instantly. That's what the higher-ups would want. But, if he just waits until the end of the day it wouldn't be awful. It's just a few hours after all. Can't he play hero for a few hours at least? Yeah, so Ayama resolves to report this tonight. But, but not just yet. Izuku storms out of the classroom angrily, his footsteps echoing through the empty halls. He collapses against the wall as tears stream down his cheeks. Deku, the usually gruff voice is rather gentle. Ugh what Kaken? He says bitterly are you going to berate me too? Kaken scoffs as he sits down next to the freckled boy you've never changed nerd. What's that supposed to mean? After you left Aldera things changed. I changed. Izuku rolls his eyes sarcastically great. Wonderful. Why are you telling me this? Kaken elbows him sharply hey let me have my melodramatic speech asshole. Anyway, things were different. It was weird not having you. There, please I'm sure it was a breath of fresh air for the great king muter god dynamite. Izuku laughs weakly through tears. Bongu huffs out a laugh maybe. Amudai was awful. When you left I started bullying this extra. Never even learned his name. But you weren't there to stand up for him. Izuku glares at him yeah, obviously. You and your cronies made sure of that. He nodded we did. I had this revelation you know. He takes in a deep breath before continuing. You would have stopped me, because you were always like that. Yeah, heroic, brave, kind. Bakugu looks to the smaller boy and decides he was being too nice so he scowls and fucking weird. So I changed. He shrugs casually went to therapy. Because that's what you would have wanted. Izuku starts crying harder and Bakugu panics. No shit, this is supposed to make you feel better you fucker. Izuku leans over and hugs the blonde boy. Thank you Kaken. I needed this. Bakugu glares at him as he shakes him off. Clearly, my point is, there is no universe in which you don't help that weird caterpillar man. So don't beat yourself up for being a hero, asshole. You know, when I first saw you a few weeks ago I thought you had some sort of elaborate personality change. Because no way Deku is that confident. Bakugu scoffs like the idea of Izuku being self-assured is so ridiculous. And I don't know exactly what the situation is with the USJ or whatever, but it's fucking obvious that you wanted to help. He looks at his childhood friend. You've never changed. Nerd. Izuku wipes away the last of his tears from his red-rimmed eyes. You know mom always said Midoriya's were criers. Kaken grunts in agreement I don't doubt it. Auntie was never wrong. Izuku nods to himself before turning to Bakugu. Follow me. He stands up and Bakugu groans. What happened to explaining things? Ha. Huh. He says as he runs after the green-haired boy. Izuku just grins trust me. I want to show you something. The pair run through the halls until they reach the courtyard. They throw the doors open and breathe in the fresh air as they catch their breath. Great, we're outside. Now what? Kaken deadpans. Izuku smirks, gotta get away from the cameras. Cameras. Izuku swings his backpack forward and opens the zipper. He pulls out a mask that is very familiar to anyone who lives in the country, hell, even the continent. Kaken gapes no fucking way. Izuku tries to suppress his smile to no avail. He bounces on the balls of his feet excitedly. Uh-huh. He squeals. How and what the? Mom had a lot of secrets apparently. Izuku beams at the awestruck boy. Kaken stares down at the Helios mask in disbelief. Damn auntie. The two boys are at the apartment above the evergreen as Izuku recaps the story of Helios and how it came to be. Bakugu throws a ball at the ceiling as Izuku relaxes in his beanbag. So how powerful is your dad anyway? Bakugu asks curiously. I can't really tell you much, but he's so powerful it's classified. Izuku chooses his words carefully. Holy shit Deku. What have you gotten yourself into? Izuku laughs I didn't get myself into anything. This is all mom's fault. Please, you could have given this up at any point. He gestures to the mask to make his point. Izuku laughs, yeah I guess so. The boy leans up and looks at the other. But you know you can't tell anyone right. Bakugu chucks the ball at Izuku's face I'm not stupid, dumbass. He scoffs. So the people who know are Nenzu. All Might, Hawks, that blood girl who you're friends with and Talia, who the hell is Talia anyway? Your life is a fucking mess dude. Preaching to the choir. Bakugu barks out a laugh so Helios got information and Izuku Midoriya tried to help at the USJ. Izuku sucks in a breath. Yep. Now I've gotta figure out how to lie to Eraser about all of this. You're doomed. Yup. That night Ayama goes for a walk to clear his head. He hasn't told anyone about Izuku Midoriya yet. Why hasn't he? He doesn't exactly know that himself. He knows, he knows, that he can't stay in this stalemate forever. Eventually all for one expects information from him. So because of how wrapped up Yuga was in his own head he didn't even notice the thief coming up behind him and snatching his watch. But he did feel it though. His head snapped in the direction of the criminal and he sighed. He can't even be mad. What he'll do is worse anyway. So he lets it go. 
not bothering to chase after the thief or even waste a moment on tears. He does hear footsteps above him and he glances up to see nothing. Nothing. Until the thief that stole his wallet lands two feet away from him completely knocked out. Ayama's eyes go wide. Oh. He looks up once more and sees a familiar face. Or a familiar mask, he should say. Helios, a vigilante doesn't make any moves. Ayama, immediately the boy is on guard. How do you know my name? Who are you? Helios jumps down from the roof and leads him into an alley, saying nothing. What is going on? Yuga asks incredulously. Wow, so your whole school persona is totally fake. Helios says. Wait, what? Oh no. W what are you talking about? Helios puts their hands on their hips cut the shit Frenchie. I will know if you lie. So you're a traitor huh? And you were going to sell out Izuku Midoriya? Ayama feels as tears fill his eyes and no I W wasn't. Was he going to sell him out? He truly wasn't sure anymore. All of a sudden Helios laughs don't worry, I'm nice. The vigilante leads the boy up a ladder into the top of the rooftop. There Helios unclicks the infamous mask in Midoriya. Ayama gapes and no way. Izuku grins luckily for you I'm a better person than dad. Ayama doesn't know what the fuck that's supposed to mean but he feels himself relax a bit. He never did want to help the villains. He, he was just so scared. He hangs his head low I'm sorry Midoriya. The boy shrugs and overall seems relatively calm for the situation it's no biggie. Almost being sold out then probably murdered is no biggie. I would have gotten away anyway. So, how'd all this happen? He asks, presumably referring to his traitorship. Ayama sighs well it all started when I was five. Izuku sits on that rooftop for about ten minutes after Ayama leaves. Well this is, interesting. He's just immensely grateful for his mind reading quirk. He's gotten better at controlling it but it's still a little unsteady. And thank God for that. His dad is on his trail. As long as Ayama does what Izuku has asked, hopefully the villain will be chasing a dead end until Nezu and Izuku can deal with him. But Izuku is still on edge, so he deals with it the only way he knows how to. Throwing himself into danger and hoping the adrenaline will make him feel better. So when he hears a scream he runs to it immediately. That night Izuku gets hurt. Badly. He was being stupid, he knows he was. But he was anxious and there was a child being taken hostage. So he threw himself in the way. Oh my god you dumbass you got fucking shot. Kaken's voice flits into his head as he imagines what the boy will say. But after Izuku dealt with the villain he didn't know where to go. He was too far from home. And despite how the civilians he saved pleaded that he go to the hospital, he couldn't. So he went to the only place nearby that he knew the passcode to. Aizawa and Yamada's apartment. So he hobbled up the stairs trying to keep the blood from seeping into the nice carpet. He typed in their passcode and the door opened with a click. He looked around the dark apartment but before he could call for help everything went blurry. Within seconds it had faded to black. When he woke up the first thing he noticed was how loud it was. People were gathered and talking at astronomical volumes. He blinked open his eyes and saw a blonde man with long hair and glasses pacing the living room. His eyes closed again and he faded out of consciousness yet again. The next time he woke up he smelled blood. He looked around and saw Aizawa grabbing a first aid kit. The third time he stayed awake. He was laying on a couch with a throw pillow beneath his head. He looked down and he saw that while his chest was bandaged, he still had on most of his suit. He tries to ignore the thought that they had probably seen all of his scars from various fights and beatdowns. He looked around and saw Aizawa sitting at his counter looking nervous. Jeez, who died? Izuku asks and the man whirls around. You, well, nearly. The hero exclaims. Aizawa's bandages are off now which makes Izuku happy. Recovery girl must have worked her magic. Izuku shrugs twas merely a flesh wound. Aizawa glowers at the boy. You got fucking shot problem child. Izuku decides he better change the topic. Anyway, you didn't take the opportunity to finally find out who the elusive Helios is. Were you scared eraser? He grins from beneath his mask. Aizawa rolls his eyes. I don't give a damn about catching you, you know that. Anyway you really scared the crap out of me and Aizawa stops himself before he can say any more but Izuku just smiles. You and your husband. He says tauntingly. Yamada Hazashi also known as. He drags out his words for as long as he possibly can present Mike. He says with glee. Of course you know, why wouldn't you? Aizawa says rubbing his temple like he's getting a headache. Your information is painfully easy to find Aizawa. He explains like for example I even know your address and the code to get in. That's not good man. At that moment present Mike walked in with arms full of groceries. Oh, the listener is up. He puts the bags on the counter as he walks over to him. How are you kiddo? Izuku falters high. How does one interact with someone they're friends with whilst not revealing their alternative identity? I'm sorry for like, um, bleeding on your couch. Yamada seems a little taken aback by this but he shrugs it off rather easily. That's perfectly alright. I'm just glad you're okay now. Izuku smiles. He's always liked Yamada. He's always so positive. Thank you. He stands up woozily and Mike has to lean forward to help him up. Careful now. 
The man says. Do you want? Golly I don't know. Do you drink coffee? Do I? Izuku grins. He then gets his bearings and walks over to where there's an old pot of coffee. He pours himself a cup, feeling perfectly at home with the smell of coffee beans. But before he drinks it he turns back to the two men. And he remembers his mask. And his secret identity. And his whole fucking double life. On second thought, he says pushing the cup away from him I'll do without. There was an awkward silence before Izuku broke it. So, where's Iri? Mike tilts his head slightly but Aizawa answers his question casually. She's in her room. We didn't want her to see the bloody and shot vigilante. Izuku smiles fair. Then Aizawa adds, you know it's strange. After all you did to help her you've never even met her. Yamada chimes in now oh. I forgot that it was Helios who gave Nedzu the information on Iri. The man beams. It's nice to meet you finally. A door opens down the small hallway and a girl walks out rubbing the tiredness out of her eyes. She spots the stranger immediately and bolts over to Aizawa's side. She whispers something to him and Aizawa nods to her. He's a friend, he says. Luckily Iri seems to take his word for it because most of the tension leaves her body. Izuku waves to her with a smile on his face that he hopes she can hear in his voice. Hi, you're Iri right. I'm Helios. She twitches slightly at this Helios, like the one that helped me get away from the bad man. She asks curiously. Izuku nods that's me. Anyway, your dads were just helping me out with something I should go. He starts to walk towards the door but Aizawa blocks the way. No way kid. What? Zawa please, I'm fine. I'm with Shouta kid. Mike says you need to stay at least for a little while just to make sure you don't faint. Izuku was considering his options. He could push his way through the door. But the men wouldn't let him leave without a fight. Could he beat them? Probably. He glances at Uri. He doesn't want her to see any more violence than she has to. He could knock all three of them out with chloroform. Or, Mr. Helios, if you're going to stay, do you want to have a tea party with me? The girl asks with light glimmering in her eyes. Got him that I can't say no to her. Izuku clicks his tongue as he concedes. You know what, sure, I'd love to. Aizawa and Yamada smile at each other, pleased that Izuku had agreed. Great, this is Mr. Might. He's the yellow teddy bear. She explains, and this is Puffy. Auntie Joke gave her to me. Izuku smiles as he sits down crisscrossed on the carpet next to the girl. She sets up a miniature table with little seats for her stuffed animals. She hands him a small plastic teacup which he takes gracefully. Iri holds one pinky up and Izuku chuckles well aren't you one classy lady. Iri smiles I'm a princess. Princesses are always classy. She says matter of factly. Izuku grins does the princess want to prank the kings by any chance? He whispers quietly to the girl. Iri's eyes light up like with silly string. I saw someone do that on TV once. Exactly. He says excitedly as he remembers that he actually has some on him. He's immensely grateful for his new support belt, it can carry so much. He's like fucking Batman. Here he looks uncertain for a moment. But won't we get in trouble? You're a princess. You can't get in trouble. He assures her. She smiles. Yeah, I'm a princess. Man, manipulating kids is so easy. No wonder Nedzu does it so much. But Izuku was really just happy to see her smile. It's clear she was loved here. He just wishes she was more confident in that love. So while Mike and Eraser make breakfast, some kind of omelette, Izuku hands Uri the silly spray. The two of them crawl on their hands and knees over to the men. Izuku nods and Uri grins as she sprays both of them with it. She misses them entirely but that's okay because she's giggling the whole time. Ah, uh, what for a pro hero Aizawa is very disorganized and clumsy. Yamada is much more put together as he turns around looking confused before realization hits Uri. Izuku stands up and high-fives the little girl good job. Uri jumps up to meet the high-five eagerly. Aizawa crosses his arms no, not good job. He exclaims but Yamada just laughs. They're both little pranksters. Mike coos while Aizawa shoots Izuku a glare. You're corrupting my daughter. Izuku shrugs. The silly string was all her brilliant idea. He says. Aizawa wipes the silly string off the counter as he rolls his eyes and lowers himself to Uri's height. Don't do anything that this little menace suggests. He points to Izuku as he says this. Uri just giggles again Helios is silly. Aizawa sends Izuku an exasperated look he is. Something. After a strangely peaceful morning Yamada and Aizawa deem Izuku somewhat healthy. Well, we can't really stop you from leaving. Mike says, but we should. Aizawa adds on gruffly. Izuku smiles at the men. I'll be okay. He turns to Uri I'm a tough one. Uri giggles come back soon k. Okay? Izuku nods. Of course, see you soon Princess Uri. He bows theatrically to her. She returns his bow with a curtsy. Prince Helios. She says with a fancy accent. Izuku laughs and as he turns to leave he waves. What would it be like to live there? Be part of that family. Izuku sighs and shakes his head to get rid of those thoughts. There isn't time to get distracted Helios. When Izuku left the Aizawa Yamada residence on Tuesday morning Shouta went immediately to his computer. Something was off here. There was a puzzle piece missing and he was going to find it. Shouta noticed the feeling yesterday when Izuku Midoriya asked about Uri while they were arguing. 
No ordinary teen should know about that. It's highly classified. He clicks on a picture of the boy. Quirk, N, A. But that, that doesn't make sense. Izuku has clearly used his quirk so many times in class. He recalls the shock on Bakugu's face when the boy had used his quirk. The two of them are either childhood friends or enemies so why did Bakugu not seem familiar with Izuku's quirk? He clicks onto the boy's parents. In Ko Midoriya. And no father listed. I've never had a dad. Helios had told him that one late night. No. Aizawa slams his laptop shut as his heart constricts. After a racer had found him with that man's dead body he couldn't find Izuku or Helios for a week straight. Not many vigilantes are expert bakers in their free time. They know me. Like Aizawa shout at me. I don't know how and I don't know for how long, but my identity has been compromised. Who knows, you may even be in my class. I think your expectations of me are a bit too high sir, but I appreciate the encouragement. Well you can't keep acting like a reckless teenager. How do you know I'm not a teenager? What were you so focused on? Oh you know, plotting murder. What can I get for you? How do you know I'm lying? What if I'm a criminal? Why aren't you a hero? He had asked Helios. They had responded vaguely. It's not time. So, how are the UA plans coming along? He had asked Midoriya. Really good actually. Izuku Midoriya had known when and where to be the day of the USJ attack. He shouldn't have known that. The evidence piles up quickly. So many things flew under the radar when it came to Izuku Midoriya. Nobody really questions his weird behaviors or strange personality because that's just who he is. Just how much did Aizawa miss while he was distracted? Helios. He was so scarred when he came in last night. While Yamada and him were tending to his gunshot wound it was hard to ignore all the other scars he had littered across his chest. Just what happened to Izuku Midoriya? Who cares how smart I am? I got offered a drink, and I took it. I wanted to feel better and I did. Why is that a bad thing? Obviously sir, you've never been an orphan at 11. Don't tell me what I know about a bad life. Inko Midoriya died 4 years ago. Izuku Midoriya would have been 11. Well fuck. All for one glances over the files given to him by Kirajiri based on the information given by the Ayama boy and he knows instantly that he's being led astray. What kind of fool does the teenager think the 200-year-old is? He shakes his head with disappointment as he shreds the file. He looks over to Kirajiri keep me updated on everyone Yuvi Ayama hangs out with. And I mean everyone. There's a new influence in his life that we need to cut out. The Namu nods yes master. All for one thinks over the Ayamas. The boy was so pliable before. What happened that turned him against the league? He scowls. He's angry but how wonderful it is that he can frown again. A new collection of quirks he had acquired had provided him with a face pretty much identical to his before the fight with All Might. He sighs as he goes through his next pile of files. He has work to do after all. Izuku returns to the Evergreen at 7. Emiko and Talia have already started up the morning shift and Izuku smiles at both of them. Hey, where were you? Talia asks. Oh, were you worried? Izuku taunts and Talia rolls his eyes out doing H business. He says casually. It's still a little weird to Izuku that so many people know he's Helios, but he's grateful he doesn't have to lie as much. Toga nods how was it? It's their little routine now. Every morning she asks if he was hurt, and if he is, Himiko helps him out a lot. She's pretty skilled at everything medicinal since she's had a lot of practice. Izuku sucks in a breath. There was a gun involved. He says quietly. Toga, who had been cutting a loaf of bread, raises the knife at him threateningly. Zu, he grimaces I may have gotten shot. She sighs that's it you're staying home today. What? I can't. You have to keep your blood in your body zoo. Then give it to me. That's how it works. Izuku concedes Faya. Hein. Taoya raises his eyebrows she's like Mother Hen. If Mother Hen was out for blood. Izuku nods mmm I see it. Both Taoya and Izuku look over Himiko studiously until she throws a knife at them. Izuku and Taoya, who are used to this, leap out of the way. Jeez, temperamental much. Taoya says amusedly. So much to his frustration Izuku spent most of the day sleeping. Honestly he really needed it. His sleep schedule has been a little more fucked than usual lately. But, unfortunately time waits for no one and the next day Izuku went to school. He walked into the classroom the next day feeling very awkward. The rest of his classmates seemed equally unsure how to treat him. His gaze drifted instinctively to Aizawa's desk. He was sitting there, grading papers and resolutely avoiding eye contact with the boy. He grabbed the straps of his backpack and sighed as he walked over to his desk. Everyone's eyes were on him but it was obvious that no one was going to breach the subject. So Izuku was immensely grateful when Aizawa announced that the class was going to the training gym. No one wanted to say anything with a racer in the room but everyone was hungry for an explanation. Izuku might as well take that opportunity to set some things straight. Sure enough as soon as they separated for their workouts a handful of his classmates gathered around. Mina and Denki, obviously, as well as Siro and Yuraraka. Mina was the first to speak. Okay, you gotta spill. What the fuck happened Monday? Like, you don't have to tell us, but you didn't come to school yesterday. Are you okay? Achako says kindly. 
Izuku cringes remembering the argument he and Aizawa got into. I got myself involved in the fight Aizawa got injured at. He didn't know I was even there till it was all over but he still insists that I was too reckless. Denki gasps ooh that's so dramatic. Who did you fight? Thankfully Siro chimes and it's probably classified. It sounds like it was dangerous. Izuku nods yeah, very. He scowls slightly but then he got all on my case about Evergreen and shit like he doesn't have his own family. Hold on, pause. Mina exclaims loudly before lowering her voice to a whisper that Grump has a family. Then Siro speaks up wow. You know, I can't believe I've never noticed this before, but you know Aizawa well don't you? Izuku nods he's been a constant in my life for years. He stops by my cafe all the time so we know each other pretty well. And I regularly take down criminals with him at 3 a.m. Denki gasps we're finding out so much Aizawa shout a lore right now. He grabs Izuku's shoulders you are so much more interesting than you were five minutes ago. What's his fashion sense like? Does he ever smile? Oh my god, what does he order? Izuku giggles so showing up drunk, being the principal student, having thousands of followers, and running a cafe by myself are all upstaged by knowing how Aizawa takes his coffee. Denki nods seriously, absolutely. Izuku rolls his eyes black coffee. Siro gasps like it's some big mystery they've solved epic. Iraraka scoffs at Denki and Siro's ridiculousness so are you okay? Were you sick yesterday or something? Izuku recalls the bullet that was in his chest 36 hours ago. Yes, sick, yep. He watches as the group walks away to do other workouts. He sighs and looks over at where Aizawa is laying in his sleeping bag. He makes eye contact with the man for a split second before they both immediately turn away. Shit. The class gets their hero costumes on and it's the weirdest thing in the world. Before when they first tried them on everyone was so focused on their suit that no one really paid much attention to each other. But not this time. Whoa, Midoriya what's that bandage for? Hiroshima asks loudly. Izuku flinches. He looks down at the bandage for a split second before laughing it off awkwardly oh, just um. All of a sudden people are staring. There are a variety of gasps, horrified, intrigued, shocked. Bro why is Midoriya ripped? He hears Siro whisper to Todoroki. Was it from when you were fighting that villain? Anjiro asks. By now the whole class was briefed on what had happened so Izuku is grateful for the easy excuse yeah? That's it. But whoa dude, you have a lot of scars. Denki says casually. Bakugu shoves the other blonde boy harshly shut at Dunt's face. Now Anjiro speaks up how did you get those? Izuku zips up his suit as quickly as he can. Just stuff. He rushes out of the changing room as fast as he can. When Izuku leaves the chatter increases by tenfold. Holy fuck. He had a six pack. That was such an insensitive question. We shouldn't pry. Everyone shut the fuck up before I blow your brains out. Bakugu roars as he stalks out of the room as well. Everyone is silent for a second before Denki breaks it. I did see a six-pack though. Izuku is the first person out of the locker room. This leaves him standing alone with Aizawa for a good minute. He walks up to the man. Hey. The man still refuses to look in his eyes. Hello Midoriya. Izuku sighs look I'm sorry I was reckless, but you have to understand where I'm coming from. I was worried. About you, about everyone. Aizawa nods I know. And I do. Understand, I mean. I was a hero student myself once. So, are we good? We're good. Sweet. By the way sorry for barging in on Monday night. I kinda ruined your nice white couch. He walks away calmly before hearing something shatter. He looks back to see Aizawa staring at him wide-eyed with his coffee cup shattered on the ground. The drink spreading across the floor. Oh jeez. Are you okay sir? You got coffee on your shirt. Aizawa regains himself quickly. Oh I need to go clean this up. The man leaves swiftly leaving Ezuku confused. Was it something I said? The rest of the day went by weirdly. Aizawa had said that it was fine, but why is he acting so off? But Izuku just ignored it and walked home with Hiroraka and Shinso later that day. And she's just so spontaneous, you know. Achako says cheerfully yesterday a guy came in and she said. Hiroraka rambles on about Himiko and how cute she is. Izuku spaces out as they walk to the evergreen. Now, he doesn't want to be rude, but he's already heard the exact same story from Himiko earlier in the day. The two are adorable together but honestly there's a limit to the amount of romance he can hear about before getting bored. The three of them enter the evergreen and Daba and Himiko waved at the hero students as they enter. Izuku, Shinso, and Yuraka put their school stuff in his apartment upstairs before getting their aprons on. Taoya and Himiko both leave their current positions when Izuku takes charge. It's been a nice change of pace to have multiple employees to pick up the pace. At first Izuku was worried whether or not he'd make enough money to pay all of them but after a few viral videos business was booming. In fact, there have been so many customers that Izuku has been considering renovating the place to make it bigger. Izuku spots Apollo jumping at Artemis from the corner of his eye and he goes to separate the two. Bad kitty. He scolds the yellow cat. Taoya clicks his tongue that's what you get for naming them Artemis and Apollo. He says. Izuku rolls his eyes as he makes someone's coffee. 
Himiko is throwing her knives at the dartboard. It would be scary but she's too good for it to feel dangerous. Taoya is serving table one and pointedly ignoring all the girls who are desperately flirting with him. Yuraka is manning the cash register with Shinso. She speaks to customers with a smile on her face. Everything seemed to fit into place nicely. He was friends with Kakan again. He had enough employees. And Aizawa was all healed. But something was wrong. He could feel it in his bones. Maybe he was still distracted by the work he did with Nenzu today on catching all for one. Maybe his injury was making him feel odd. He figured it out when the closing shift started locking the doors. Aizawa hadn't stopped by. So that night as Izuku got on his helio suit and put on his mask he went straight for their rooftop. Sure enough, there he was. Izuku sat next to him quietly. The man was staring at him and it felt, strange, like he was looking through him. Oh, shit. All of a sudden Izuku remembers what he said a few hours prior. By the way sorry for barging in on Monday night. I kinda ruined your nice white couch. Izuku turns to the man you know. The racer looks a little stunned but soon he sighs I know. Izuku takes off his mask with a bitter smile. I guess I was hoping the voice changer would be enough to counter most suspicions. Despite knowing the truth the man's breath still caught as he saw his student in the suit of the most reckless and powerful vigilante Japan has ever known. Good god Izuku. Izuku sends him a smirk you have to admit that I was pretty sneaky with it. Aizawa laughs in disbelief. You, I can't even. Izuku cackles I had you so good. I would even talk to you about Helios as Izuku Midoriya. He smiled how obvious was it. Aizawa shakes his head. You said so many things that should have clued me in. That I did. I was having a fun time. He says with a satisfactory grin. I bet you were. Running circles around the pro hero known for figuring out secret identities. Aizawa looked at the boy. So you've been doing this since her mom died. Izuku nods yep. Can you believe she never told me? He looks at Aizawa's expression and laughs I know right. I had to find out from her journals. Aizawa scoffs so why are you registered as quirkless? Izuku fiddles with his fingers nervously. Well I couldn't tell anyone about my real quirk so I lived most of my life as a quirkless kid. But why? What is your quirk? There's so much talk about it because nobody can pinpoint it. Izuku smirks. My quirk is something pretty special. He looks up at the stars as he explains but it's sort of classified. It has something to do with what me and Nedzu are working on. Aizawa rubs his head. How many secrets do you have kid? Lots. First of all, I have a second quirk. Ha, ha ha. Let me tell you a story about two brothers. So that night passes with Izuku explaining every little thing he couldn't before. Every single joke he made that went by unnoticed. Every scheme he pulled. Every explanation for every decision. Everything that had gone unseen. It was a good night. Aizawa feels like his brain is exploding. So let me get this straight. You got a quirk that was passed down for centuries from All Might. Izuku nods so Shouta continues. It's super strength that you're passing off as just being a late bloomer. And two of your employees are morally gray people that you met either after a stabbing or at a bar. By the way, how did you get into a bar? You're 15. Izuku smiles but Helios isn't. Shouta groans right. So the people who know about this are who again? Nedzu, All Might, Toga, Taoya, Hawks, Aoyama, Kakin, and now you I guess. Wow Izuku frowns slightly that's too many people. And you're anonymous on Twitter too. Do you even sleep? What can I say? I'm a creature of the night. Aizawa sighs god you're greeny too right. The vandal. Izuku grins oh yeah. I forgot about that. Aizawa smiles despite himself. You really just help people, don't you? Huh? What do you mean? As Midoriya Izuku, you feed hundreds of people a day. As Helios you save lives. You do god knows what with Nenzu. As Anonymous you create change. And as All Might's successor who knows how many lives you will save. How? Even using spray paint you slander an awful man and regularly disrupt his life which... I'm gonna be honest, is pretty damn helpful to my faith in humanity. Izuku feels his face get hot at the praise. Just doing my due diligence. Shouta shakes his head. This isn't due diligence, kid. This is being a hero. And an overworked one at that. Too much for a 15-year-old who should be having a normal life. How how do you manage? Izuku's expression turns thoughtful I guess I've just been doing it for so long that it's just how it is. Shouta ruffles the boy's hair gently this shouldn't be how it is problem child. You need rest. Sleep. Izuku smiles softly as much as I'd like that Zawa. I have to do this. Why? Shouta asks desperately why do you have to push yourself like this? Izuku stands up and looks down at the sitting man. Because I'm Helios. His mask clicks into place. It's what I do. All for one reads over the small list retrieved by Kirajiri. And these are all the people he was with. Yes sir. I even added his classmates on the back. All for one size and turns over the paper immediately noticing one name in particular. Midoriya. Izuku Midoriya. He frowns slightly. What a coincidence. He was about to write it off as some silly random thing but then Kirajiri flinched and all for one glanced at him. Does the name Izuku Midoriya ring any bells? The Namu says nothing. Use your tongue before I rip it out of your head myself. 
at the USJ. Immediately all for one's attention is wrapped. The hero, Eraserhead, said something about an Izuku. All for one grips the sides of his chair and hisses out through gritted teeth and why didn't you mention this earlier? I, I didn't think it mattered. All for one gives his assistant a smile as he stands up. I'm sore. Before the pitiful excuse for an employee finishes his sentence all for one smashes his head into the concrete wall. Not enough to kill him. That would be inconvenient. But enough for him to really feel it. Everything matters. He says as he brings out his handkerchief to wipe some blood from his freckled face. Speak up next time. So, go over what happened at the USJ again. Leave nothing out this time, okay? He smiles with phony benevolence and Kirajiri nods. Why yes sir. All for one looks over the picture provided of the boy. Izuku Midoriya. At the USJ where Tamura's quirk was stolen. Green hair. Like her. Freckles. Like me. He breaks out in a grin as he starts laughing. Sir. Kirajiri looks rather concerned but all for one doesn't care. He turns to the man with a manic smile on his face. A few centuries ago people had said his smile had reminded them of the sun. He wonders what it looks like now. I do believe I am a father. He says gleefully. The next day when Izuku wakes up Aizawa's words bounce around his head. This is too much for a 15-year-old who should be having a normal life. It never really felt that way to him. He was always just doing what needed to be done. People needed to be saved, so he saved them. Customers needed to be fed, so he fed them. The HPSC needed to be taken down, so he took it down. Today he glanced at the work schedule. He had an after-school shift like he normally does. But, what if he took time off? He has four other employees, it wouldn't be a stretch, it'd actually be. Easy. So he did. He turned to Toga and asked if she minded working another shift. She had just nodded and said sure thing. That's the shift with Anchako Sen right. Awesome. He felt a smile creeping across his face. Yeah. Now he had some free time after school. He grabbed his backpack and ran out the door. He glanced down at his watch, he was early. He supposes he did go in a little earlier the other night. So he stopped running and started simply walking. He strolled past the gates and walked into the school. He walked into Nedzu's office and asked, Say, can you help me with something? Huh, Izuku felt good. He slept for seven hours last night, and he and Nedzu had covered some serious ground with the Endeavor case. He had just assumed that the principal wouldn't have time to help him out. But to his surprise the rat was excited to work on it. By 1pm they had constructed a nearly impenetrable case against Endeavor. Then he went to the cafeteria and ate with his friends. Lunch Rush handed out food to all the students and Izuku was surprised at how good it was. He chatted happily with Tenya, Achako, Suyu and Shoto. He even stopped by Kaken's table and said hello to him. He got a little singed in the process. But he didn't care, he was having a good day. He managed to get through today's hero lessons without being sent to recovery girl and Aizawa was finally normal again after tiptoeing around him. That day as he was walking back to the Evergreen he asked Achako and Shinzo a question. How busy would you say your days are? Hiroraka hums thoughtfully let's see. I get up around 7.30 and get ready. Then I go to school. Then work for a few hours before going home. I do my homework. Sometimes I paint. Then I go to bed at 11. Why do you ask? Izuku shakes his head just wondering. Then Shinzo responds. I get up at like 8, go to school then work. I do some training then go to bed at like. He winces when thinking about his sleep schedule like 3 or 4. Hiroraka gasps that's not nearly enough sleep Shinzo. Well, what about you Midoriya? Get up at 5. Set up the cafe. Open at 6. Work. School. Work. Bed at 11. Up at midnight to be Helios until like 3 or 4 a.m. Fuck. Then he realizes neither of them knows he's Helios. Up uh, pretty much the same as you Yuraka. You know, up at 5 for the cafe and bed at 9 or 10. The three of them walk in peace for the rest of the stroll while Izuku is considering his life choices. I know my schedule is a lot but is it really that bad? That night he decides to not go out as Helios. He's nervous of course, what if something goes wrong? But he's going to do this. So he drifts into sleep early and fades into dreams quicker than he ever has in the past. Oh, is he finally here? It took him long enough. Shush, go easy on him. What do you mean? He should have made it here long ago. Oh shut up third. You know that this is unorthodox. That's one way to put it. He's coming around. Oh leave him alone fifth. Izuku opens his eyes and sees seven people and one miss man. Huh. He looks around and recognizes most of them. Oh my god, you're the holders. He gasps as he realizes who they are. He's quick. That's right. A woman with Inkai black hair kneels down next to where Izuku is laying on the groutish space. How? What is happening? He asks. A man with pink hair shrugs. We're pretty sure you're here because of your dad. Wah. The woman next to Izuku speaks again. But we're not entirely sure. Honestly you showing up was just a good guess on Third's part. Third smirks. It was more than a guess. I called it. Izuku looks around in confusion you know about my dad. Of course, we know everything that has ever happened to you. Izuku shudders but then the pink-haired man jumps in. Not everything. 
Just everything since you got one for all. That's a bit better, Izuku supposes. So you guys are just watching me, pretty much. What else are we supposed to do? We're dead. Your life is free entertainment for us. Fourth brings the blankets, I bring the popcorn. Fifth says, hey, now a man with long white hair starts talking for the first time. Leave my nephew alone guys. He turns to Izuku. Sorry about them. Oh, you're first. He pauses for a second my uncle. First smiles. That's me. Now since you're here we might as well fill you in on some things about all for one and one for all. Izuku smiles. That'd be really great actually. So when Izuku wakes up to his 5am alarm he has a lot more information about his dad than he ever thought possible. He rubs his eyes as he walks downstairs thinking about his conversations with the vestiges. He yawns and then all of a sudden he hears, you missed a step. Before he can register that he's tripped and fallen. He braces himself for impact then. Hold on, what? He looks down and finds himself floating. I do not remember taking this quirk. He thinks to himself. Yeah, that's because it's mine. What the fuck? Seventh, that's me. Whoa, I can talk to you like. Telepathically. Another one of my excellent theories that came true. Third says smugly. Huh, so can I just. He concentrates and dark ropes fly from his wrists. It crashes into a stack of pots and pans and bangs them around. Holy fuck. He turns around and sees Himiko staring at him. Could you always do that? Oh damn you got caught. Second says. Uh, no. New development of sorts. Himiko rolls her eyes playfully your quirk is so stupid. Like super strength. Some sort of lightning and now what? Whips. Izuku tucks a strand of his dark green hair behind his ear. Yep. Strange. The two of them get the cafe up and running. After setting up and eating breakfast they have some extra time to just play with the cats. Then at about 5.30 Taoya walks in earlier than he usually does. Izuku had asked for him to come in early to go over some endeavor plans. He looks at the pair of teenagers surrounded by cats and sighs. How do you guys get up so early? Himeko grins bold of you to assume we ever sleep. Izuku snorts mood. Taoya leans down to sit next to the pair. He winces as his bones crack and Izuku and Himeko giggle. Oh fuck you guys and your stupid young bones. Izuku laughs okay old man. So do you want to get started with this? Taoya sighs not really. But I guess we should. Izuku picks up Aphrodite pretends she's your shit stain of a father. Emiko protests no. Dite is too nice to be Endeavor. She grabs Ares use him. Izuku nods good point, good point. The red cat hisses at being picked up like a plaything but stays pretty well behaved otherwise. This is Endeavor. You're on the stand. Emiko picks up Hascha O and this is the attorney. She says excitedly. Tauyer raises his eyebrows at the dramatics but doesn't fight it. Himiko puts on her best serious voice, which is not very convincing, and asks the questions listed on the paper Izuku and Nenzu had worked on. Taya Todoroki, you were said to be. After a while they've gotten through most of it, but there are still a few roadblocks. Are you sure I can't call him a motherfucker on the stand? He asks again. Himiko turns to Izuku it seems fair to call him one, I mean he did fuck his mother. Taya grins C. Hemi agrees with me. Izuku rolls his eyes. Himi is also on Japan's most wanted list. I don't think you should listen to her advice on how to act in court. Or how to act anywhere for that matter. He shoves Himiko playfully. Hey I take a lot of pride in being on that list. Izuku smirks. Anyway, much as I would love to see you tear into that piece of shit, we're trying to appear like kind souls to the jury. Taoya scowls HMPH. Speaking of kind souls. No, Zu don't ask. You know I have to dabs. Don't you want to see him again? Preferably before things all go to shit. Taoya sighs how would I do that? Hi Shoto it's me, your dead brother. Oh Natsuo, Fayumi how's it hanging? I'm scarred both mentally and physically. He says cheerfully before returning to his usual board drawl yeah. That's not a nice family reunion. Izuku sighs but. If he asks about you can I tell him? Taoya rolls his eyes you act like he's just going to think huh. Is my friend's co-worker my dead brother who died years ago? That's not going to happen. Later that day Izuku, Shinso, Achako, Asui, Tenya and Shoto all went to the Evergreen. Izuku, Shinso and Achako work there of course and Tenya is a regular, so it was mostly Asui and Shoto who were interested in what the famous cafe was all about. Taoya was working at the cash register when the UA students came in and he paled immediately but remained relatively well composed. Your friend Zu. He raised an eyebrow giving Izuku a look. Izuku shrugged with a smile yep. What do you guys want to order? After the others have decided on what they want, Shoto looks over the menu and then asks Taoya do you have cold soba? We're a coffee shop. He responds. Shoto tilts his head in confusion so do you have cold soba? Taoya's nonchalant expression falters and he sighs fine. But soba isn't on the menu. Seventh asks curiously. Nope. Izuku smiles to himself. It's most certainly not. Shoto gives his brother his father's credit card and Taoya smirks. Did you steal your old man's card? When asked this, normal people would usually deny it or laugh it off as a joke. But Shoto is not necessarily a normal person. 
Yes I did. In the back Tenya squawks Todoroki. Talia grins sweet. Keep it up kid. He hands the card back to him and goes to the back to get the orders ready. As the group finds a booth to sit at Izuku decides he better help out Talia find the cold soba he promised his brother. He walks into the back and sees Talia opening every single cupboard possible. He notices Izuku and asks frantically do we have soba. Izuku laughs and opens up a cabinet and pulls out the missing ingredients. So, your brother. Talia scowls at the teen why is he here Zoo? Shoto doesn't just go to things like this on his own. Other people bring him. Izuku crosses his arms well how do you know that? You haven't seen him for what, 10 years? He could have changed. Talia shakes his head no one can change. Not in that house. Izuku leaps up and sits on a counter watching as Talia prepares his brother's dish. You have an opportunity to help him. He's sitting 40 feet away from you. You can tell him. Drop it Izuku. He turns to the boy seriously. Izuku sighs okay. It's dropped. He hops down from the counter and walks back to the booth with his friends. That night he goes out as Helios for the first time since telling Aizawa. It was weird. He groans and turns around stop following me dude. Aizawa pops out from the shadows and crosses his arms I will not leave you alone to fend for yourself. It's dangerous at night. I know you can't see it but I'm giving you an angry look under the mask. He shouts to the man I've been doing this for years you need to trust me. Aizawa walks next to him as they patrol the dark streets. It's different now. Izuku frowns why. It's not like I've changed in the past few days. I'm still Helios, you're still a racer. He nudges the man so lighten up. He watches as the man's eye twitches, clearly torn. Fine, but you will be very careful, do you hear me Izuku? Careful, Oh, he's like your dad. Fort says, shut up. Izuku thinks embarrassedly. Whatever you say old man. Say, do you want to help me prank Endeavor? The man raises an eyebrow and why would I want to do that? That's not a no. Cause you hate him. He says it like it's a ridiculous question. I'll tell you some weird shit I've learned about him if you help me. I know you're curious about his dirty little secrets. I most certainly am not. The man denies fervently. Izuku waves his hand dismissively sure. But if I told you I knew what he keeps tucked underneath his mattress you wouldn't be even a little interested. There's a spark of intrigue in the man's eyes and Izuku grins. Come on, I know you want to help me. Aizawa studies the boy what kind of prank are we talking about? Izuku grins water gun robots. Aizawa starts walking away right then and there I don't even know why I trusted you. He races after the man come on. You just don't see the vision yet. Imagine. Enji Todoroki, surrounded by 50 feet fireproof robots spraying him down head to toe. He smiles at the man you can't tell me that's not worth getting a little toasted over. Aizawa stops walking and turns back to the boy. I can't believe I'm going to agree to this. He sighs. Izuku giggles as he jumps excitedly but you're going to. He pumps his fist happily I can finally tell Yamada that I've finally corrupted the morally upstanding Aizawa Shouta. The man rolls his eyes. So, where are we going to get fireproof robots? Huh. In the shadows of the alley there's a petty thief with a quirk that vanishes her presence entirely. She watches as the two continue walking and pulls out her phone to send the recording to her contractor. Greater than tonight's information. Lesser than thank you. I sent you the money. Greater than have a good night boss. All for one listens to the recording like he does whenever someone catches his attention. He didn't really expect much from it but sometimes the recordings pleased him. Hem. He turns to Kirajiri Izuku. My son. A hero student and a vigilante. The man smiles, planning pranks and wreaking havoc. It's nature versus nurture he supposes. Or, more accurately, me versus Inko. He stands up and grabs his coat from the rack. I do wonder what proves to be more influential. Where are you going? Kirajiri asks. To meet my son of course. He grins where else? Izuku watches on the news the video of giant robots chasing Endeavor down the street a few hours prior. He and Shoto are throwing a mini celebration in the evergreen about it. Izuku had called Shoto the previous night asking if he wanted to assist him with the cameras. So a few hours ago the monotone boy was chasing his father down the street with a camera. He watches through the TV as the man yells for his son to help only to be laughed at. So basically what Izuku is trying to say is that he was busy and not paying attention when it happened. But he still felt him. Even from blocks away Izuku could sense it. He could feel the hairs on the back of his neck stand up. Kid, is that who I think it is? Seventh asks nervously. No, no this wasn't supposed to happen yet. He panics. Oh no, it's him isn't it? I'm so sorry, kid. Hey, stop being such fucking pessimists. Second scolds. This fight isn't over yet. Hell, it hasn't even started. Izuku turns to Shoto and Shinzo and speaks to them in a hushed voice. You need to hide. Both of you. WH Shinzo starts to ask. There's no time. He grabs a few knives from under the counter and places them in their hands. This is when you need to trust me. The two nod, still looking a bit confused, but they grab the weapons anyway. Izuku turns back to the front with his mind racing. Why is he here? He looks around to see how many people he can help evacuate from the cafe. But there's not enough time. 
The bell rings and Izuku's breath hitches. He looks up at the man. He has an average height and build. He has short fluffy white hair with a spattering of freckles across his kind face. Anyone else would trust the man instantly. He looks perfectly ordinary, innocent, but Izuku knows better. He can feel it. That son of a bitch. Fifth grumbles. He could always trip people up with his looks. What can I get you sir? He asks with a smile. The man tilts his head and Izuku is frustratingly aware that his mind-reading quirk refuses to work. The man's brow furrows slightly. Maybe he had a similar experience with the quirk blocking. Izuku hopes that's the case. Then the man smiles and it's like looking in a mirror. I'll get a coffee with a touch of sugar and one pump of caramel. Izuku smiles in return trying to ignore his shaking hands of course. He places the cup under the machine and watches as the man sits down at the counter just a few feet from Izuku. Are you a UA student by any chance? He asks. Izuku nods I am. How did you know? The man shrugs I've seen you walking to UA in uniform. Your father must be proud. He says with a glint in his silvery eyes. Izuku's words die in the back of his throat as he hears this and a strong wave of rage comes over him. Oh I'm not so sure about that. No, but you seem like such an impressive young man. Wrong, wrong, this is all wrong. Izuku thinks to himself. Izuku hands all for one his coffee I never knew him. From what my mother has told me though, he sounds like an asshat. He says as the man sips his drink. Seventh gasps, don't you have any will to live? I work in customer service. Of course I don't. Izuku responds dryly. All for one narrows his eyes and gives Izuku a look. HM, you're quite gusty aren't you Izuku? Izuku never gave his name. They both know that. It's an invitation for further conversation. Izuku shrugs and smirks I have no patience for villain's dad. I am a UA student after all. Provoking his supervillain father is an awful idea. He knows that. But honestly Izuku is past the point of giving any fucks. This is a bad idea kid. The man folds his hands over the counter I never knew my son was so moral. The man taunts. Izuku blinks at the man in an unimpressed manner. I was never your son. All you gave me was a shitload of daddy issues. Fifth snorts goddamn. Ninth has some balls. The man grins a shitload of daddy issues and a rather impressive quirk. I'd wager you're more like me than you give yourself credit for. You gave me a bothersome quirk. Izuku corrects I would have been better off without it. HM. Well, either way, I'm sure you've noticed the problem by now. Our quirks cancel each other out. Izuku says. A barrier. His father nods indeed. But he doesn't say anything after that so Izuku sighs. Why are you here? I'm here because I'm your father of course. I'm sure I owe you quite a lot in child support the man says with mirth shining in his eyes. I didn't know you existed until a few days ago. He proclaims. Izuku shakes his head and laughs don't try to lie to me. I can smell your bullshit from a mile away. The man sighs dramatically so testy. But your question is reasonable. I'm here to assess how much you know. Of what? Izuku raises an eyebrow of you. Of all might. Of your little league. All for one hums all of the above. So I must ask how on earth you know about me. Izuku wipes down a glass as he answers I could ask the same to you. Neither of us were supposed to know of each other. Is that what Inko tried to do? Keep you from the truth. What a pathetic woman really. Izuku snapped. He doesn't care who the hell it is. No one insults mom. He felt one for all crackle through his veins as he smacked the man across his face. The slap echoes around the cafe and all the patrons who didn't notice the father and son are now staring wide eyed Everyone is silent. All for one's cheek hurts like a motherfucker and he smirks at the boy. You pack quite a punch, kid. Considering the circumstances with our quirks, that can only be from the blonde douchebag. That doesn't matter. Don't talk about mom that way. The man stands up and the customers of the Evergreen all watch the man with caution as he grabs his coat and puts it on. Fine, we won't talk about your mother, but I will see you again. Izuku glares at him when we meet again it will be in poor circumstances. All for one gives his son a look and then nods I'm sure it will. Goodbye son, it's Midoriya, not Izuku, and certainly not son. You may be my father, but you're not my dad. You will regret not joining our side Midoriya. The boy smirks cockily we'll see. With that the man leaves and Izuku stands there, waiting, on guard. But nothing happens, his father has left. After a few moments a few of his regulars come up to him and ask him if he's okay. He gives them a nod of assurance and then turns to the rest of the customers. Then he goes into the back and shouts up to Hitoshi and Shoto you two can come out now. He watches as the two of them file out of the vents awkwardly. Shoto walks up to him first was that your dad? Izuku nods, painful aware of all the customers eavesdropping. Yeah, he's kinda bitchy. Shinso cackles well you certainly dealt with him. We could hear the smack from up there. He points to their hiding spot. I've been wanting to do that for 15 years. He says with a faint smile on his face. He turns to the pair of them I'm sorry for not explaining anything beforehand. All of a sudden he was coming here, and I just freaked. So daddy dearest is a villain, huh? Itoshi asks curiously. Oh you have no idea. Later that day Aizawa calls him to invite him over to his apartment as Izuku Midori. 
He didn't say why but Izuku has a sneaking suspicion that Yamada knows full well about his sidekick as a vigilante. Secretly Izuku is really grateful for the plans. After meeting his serial killer of a father for the first time he would really enjoy some relatively normal family dynamics. But he's still nervous. What if Iri doesn't like him when he's out of costume? What if it's awkward? Calm down ninth. It'll be fine. Seventh assures him. So he fidgets nervously with the cuffs of his sleeves as he takes the elevator up to their floor. He knocks on the door and hears the blonde hero just a sec. The man opens the door with a big smile welcome. Izuku has to jump over a few stuffed animals littering the floor to make his way to the living room, but he doesn't mind. Aizawa is currently stirring something that looks a little burnt and smells suspiciously like smoke. He walks over and looks at the skillet and winces man, you really can't cook. The man glares at him why do you think I go to Evergreen every day? Because my personality is addictive and you have the compulsion to adopt every sad parentless child you see. Aizawa snorts as he gives up on his cooking. We should probably just order delivery. He says to Yamada but Izuku shakes his head. No way man. You forget you have an expert right here. But you're a baker. Do you cook? Izuku shrugs Kaken has taught me the basics. Kaken, Yamada asks curiously. Oh, he says realizing that the man probably isn't aware of his connection to Bakugo. That's what I call Katsuki. Izuku looks through the fridge trying to find something he can whip up. You're friends with Katsuki Bakugo. Ha, huh, I'll admit I didn't see that coming. Izuku grins people never do. He then notices the lack of one white-haired girl wears Iri. Yamada raises his eyebrows so you really are Helios, huh? Aizawa scoffs. What did you doubt my information? Izuku smiles I am indeed. I spilled the beans when I apologized to Eraser for ruining the couch. He glances at the new couch and sucks in a breath. Again, sorry. Aizawa rolls his eyes you were shot. Problem child. Don't apologize for bleeding when injured. Anyway, Iri is in her room, but she'll come out soon. Izuku nods does she know who I am? Yamada shakes his head nope. All she knows is that you're a family friend. Izuku looks at the men skeptically. Well this will be an interesting dinner. When Izuku finishes the dish he makes no attempt to stay humble. Yes I did make this exquisite meal all by myself. Oh you say I'm incredible. He puts a hand up to his mouth in mock shock please, you're too kind. He acts out dramatic scenes to himself as he puts the food on the table. Iri looks at him you're funny. She says and Izuku just about dies from cuteness overload. He grins well thank you Miss Iri. He sits down at the table next to her. Did your dads tell you who I am? Immediately Aizawa and Yamada's heads snap up. He can see exactly what they're thinking displayed across their faces. Don't tell her you're Helios. He gives them a look to say. I'm not fucking stupid you guys. Not really no. She says with a spark of intrigue in her face. I'm a hero student in your dad's class. Really? Are you good at it? She asks. The very best. He glances over to the man then leans close to her and whispers in her ear probably even better than Aizawa. Wow. You're humble. Third deadpans. Yuri shakes her head adamantly no one's better than dad. Izuku gives her a grin normally I'd agree, but I'm just that good. Don't get a big head kid. Aizawa warns him teasingly. After dinner was over and Yuri was getting ready for bed. Izuku was talking with the men who were doing the dishes. He was having a perfectly nice time but then he remembers he should probably update Aizawa on what happened a few hours prior. Oh, I need to tell you something. Aizawa tenses, his mind immediately going to the worst possible scenario. What happened? He asks urgently. Izuku swallows harshly. My father stopped by. But Aizawa's face perfectly embodies a loading screen and if Izuku was in a better mood he would laugh. But I thought you were an orphan. Yamada goes wide-eyed with shock at his husband's blunt question but Izuku doesn't mind oh, I am. He's not my dad, just my father. He says. He's the Project Nezu and I have been working on. Aizawa narrows his eyes explain. Izuku waves his hand around absent-mindedly it was the condition of me entering UA. He helps me track down and capture my father, and I agree to be his student. Aizawa rubs his face with his hands. Good God. He looks up at the teenager and asks so he's a villain? Izuku laughs that's an understatement. He's more like the villain. Have you ever heard of the King of the Underground? He asks causally. The fork Aizawa was cleaning drops to the ground, clattering on the tile floor. All for one. Oh my God. Izuku smiles he threatened my life a few hours ago. Not the best of times. Oh kiddo. Yamada says softly but Izuku just shakes his head. Don't make this a thing. Me and Nedzu have got it handled. Don't make her life being endangered a thing. Aizawa asks incredulously. Yep. He says cheerfully as he walks towards the door. Just letting you guys know. If I go missing it's not by choice. He closes the door quickly and races down the hall. He can hear the men running after him saying Izuku this is serious. And we can help you. But he doesn't care. He jumps down multiple stairs at a time and races out of the apartment building with record timing. He glances up at the building and in a window he sees Uri's room. She's staring at him through the window, obviously curious as to why this boy is running away as her dads yell their offers of help. He gives her a wave and mouths see you later. 
before Aizawa bursts out of the door. Izuku, we need to talk about this. Eraser says as he chases the boy down the road. You really should let them help you. First advises but Izuku shakes his head. As incredible as Eraser is, not even All Might at his prime could handle all for one. There's no need for unnecessary bloodshed, especially when it comes to the Aizawa Yamada family. He thinks of what would happen if they got involved with all for one and he shudders. That's not happening. So Izuku just grins as he crawls up to the rooftops with E's too slow eraser. Pretty soon it's clear that there's no getting through to the boy so Aizawa has no choice but to let him go. Jesus kid. At night Izuku enjoys causing a little bit more chaos. He grabs his Helios costume before going out. He goes to the HPSC headquarters and is a little peeved to see that there are still employees there. He was just about to activate his invisibility when he notices Endeavor in there. Interesting. So in full vigilante gear he strolls into the building and listens into Endeavor's conversation with the receptionist. Are you fucking stupid, or are you just a bitch? Huh? Well what is it? The man is yelling at Izuku size. It's gonna be one of those fights. And G Todoroki never cooled off, it seems. Seventh hums discontentedly. Izuku snorts. That's one way to put it. He grabs the man's arm and throws him over his shoulder slamming him into the concrete floor. Don't call my friend. He takes a glance at the receptionist named Tak. Hana a bitch. He turns to Hana and says tell Madam President she has a visitor. The receptionist looks a little stunned and shell-shocked but calls the president either way. At this point Endeavor has mostly recovered. He's groaning and wincing and in general just looks super fucking pissed off. The fiery man comes running at him but with a well-placed kick to the groin the man is crumpled up on the floor once more. Um, she's ready for you. Hana says nervously as she points to the now open elevator. Izuku can't help himself as he says to the hero known your place and he walks past him and into the elevator with a smile. The door closes with a ding. Izuku tolerates the irritating elevator music until he reaches the 40th floor. He steps into the pearly white office of the commission president and suppresses a shudder at the atmosphere. A middle-aged woman with graying hair sits at a desk in front of a large window showing the sparkly lights of the city below. I'll admit, I'm surprised that you're here Helios. Izuku frowns at her you shouldn't be. The woman looks over him with a wise sort of caution in her face. Please, sit. She gestures at two chairs in the center of the office and Izuku obliges. I'm going to be honest. I'm impressed with you madam. Though, the commission was unheard of before you came into power. I respect your capabilities. I feel a bit coming. She says with a small smile gracing her face. But, you treat your workers awfully. The woman narrows her eyes as she crosses her legs gracefully. Why are you here Helios? The HPSC was practically destroyed after the anonymous posts. He smirks oh I know. That was the goal. Her eyes widened at this you're anonymous. Are you here to finish the job? Destroy us permanently. Izuku shrugs casually originally yes. I figured a little arson was needed. Too bad there are innocent people here. The woman takes a breath but makes no move to call security. Interesting. You're insane Helios. I will never know how you managed to convince the public that you are trustworthy. Helios grins similar methods to you I bet. Charisma and charm are useful. What do you want? Hawks. Absolutely not. The woman says definitively. Izuku looks over at the woman. He sees her hand a few inches from her pocket. Probably a gun. He sees her eyes. The fire in them. There will be no compromises made tonight. He stands up and her hand grabs the gun hidden in her coat. She pulls it out and turns it on him in an instant. Izuku looks at it then back at her. For a moment no one moves. Izuku stands there looking down the barrel of the gun. The president's hand is steady on the trigger. It's familiar to her. Izuku actually likes the president. She's cocky but capable. She's a vile woman but she's aware of that. She isn't under any illusion that she's a good person. But the HPSC goes down tonight. That's one thing that must stay unchanged. The vestiges shout out a variety of very unhelpful advice and Izuku tunes them out. He needs to be present for this. So the silent standoff between the two ends with a bang. The scent of gunpowder is in the air and it happens within an instant. The gun grazes his shoulder as he punches her in the jaw. The gun clatters to the floor and the president is out cold as Izuku puts pressure on his wounded arm. Oh thank god you're okay. Fourth exclaims. He smiles smugly, I'm no amateur fourth. He walks around the office looking in drawers and on her desk for the files he was sure to find. He went around grabbing every paper that seemed important but it took a while to find the specific ones. Eventually, he found them. The financial papers were in a locked drawer that he cracked open with one for all. He snapped a few pictures and posted them online to his anonymous account. Caption, How to Commit Tax Fraud with Special Guest Madam President TTH then he looked at the unconscious woman laying on the ground and pondered what to do with her. He ends up taking her gun, but it's a little different than he's used to. He checks inside and the bullets are strange and red. He recalls the only other time he's seen this type of gun. At Kaichisaki's warehouse. Huh. He shrugs that thought off when half a dozen security guards come barging in. 
He supposes that the sound of the gunshot rattled through the building so it was time for Izuku to go. He leapt over the desk and crashed out the glass window. The shards of glass cut his face thoroughly but it's a better alternative to whatever is in the security guard's gun. As he flew through the air he extended a black whip to grab onto another building. Swinging through the air above the city lights Izuku felt a buzz in his chest. He was flying, and only part of that was figurative. Hell yeah. Sixth roars. This kid is fun. But the aid of the quirks of the vestiges Izuku whips around buildings and crashes onto a roof of a building far taller than he's used to. He looks around and the HPSC building is far away and no longer an issue. Hopefully. Anyway he glances down at the cars racing down below. The world is tinted purple with bright yellow city lights spread across like stars in the sky. He looks at his costume. It's tattered and torn from the glass but it's been through worse. He sits on the roof, feeling rather peaceful despite having just been in a fight for his life. Izuku smiles as he goes through the papers he snatched. He lifts them up as he chucks them off the roof. The papers fall gently like snow and Izuku watches with satisfaction. He takes out a cigarette from his belt and lights it. He breathes in the smoke as he wonders what All for One is doing right now. A few miles away All for One was in a laboratory. A bit of Midoriya's DNA and it's confirmed. I have a son. He says oddly shaken by this confirmation despite having met Izuku and seen the uncanny resemblance the boy shares with himself. What should we do sir? Kidnapping, torture or assassination? All for one mouth twitches downward at the idea of harming his son. But the man has a point. The boy is dangerous and clearly willing to fight back. I say we wait. The sports festival is coming up anyway. It's better to take away the hope given rather than to squash it immediately. If you let people think change is coming it's even more crushing to watch it die. The doctor looks a little unsure but he nods nonetheless yes sir. All for one scrolls through the social media page of it might a might six nine. What a foolish name, truly. But he can't deny the small smile that forms on his face watching clips of his son hang around with his friends. HM. Too bad he's such a stickler to the rules. He might have been a good replacement for Tamura. After watching the papers scatter on the ground, Izuku decides that he better get home. He stands up and stretches his arms. The wound from the bullet still aches, and Izuku glances at it. He pulls out the gun he was shot with and turns over a bullet in his hand. Something about it makes his instincts scream at him. There's something shiny on the top of it that Izuku inspects. He quickly realizes that there's a needle in the middle of the bullet. It probably injects something into the target. Once he thinks about this he becomes immensely grateful that the needle of the bullet he was hit with didn't get into his skin. That would have been bad. He decides to pocket the bullets. He'll have to do some experiments with it. He sends out a black whip into the dark night sky and starts to swing his way home. It won't be until much later that he realizes just how close he came to losing his quirks that night. But that's neither here nor there. Izuku comes to school the next day with a smile on his face. Everyone and their mother is gossiping about how anonymous is actually Helios, that the tax fraud accusations were true, and how the HPSC is officially done for. He walks into class and sees Kakin staring at him with a raised eyebrow. He walks over to the boy and shrugs. What? I like to have hobbies. Knocking the lights out of the head of the commission is a hobby. Kakin says under his breath. Sure is. And a fun one too. Izuku replies as he sits at his desk. Bakugo rolls his eyes mom wants you over for dinner. She practically had a stroke when she found out you got into UA. Izuku snorts she never did have high expectations for me, did she? But sure, I'll come. You better. She has a lot of questions. Ugwaii. He groans dramatically. It's what you get for skipping town. Bakugo says, taking delight in Izuku's misery. Uu ninth is in trouble. Second taunts. Izuku scoffs internally oh shut up. But now six joins in. True uable. Izuku scowls I didn't skip town I moved 15 minutes away. The world didn't end. Whatever. She misses auntie. Izuku stiffens and Bakugu sighs I didn't tell her what happened. Izuku looks at the boy sadly. This is gonna suck ass. Bakugu inhales harshly. Yep. At this point Aizawa calls the class's attention. Hey, sit down. Yes I'm talking to you Denki. The man sighs and begrudgingly points to the board I'm legally obligated to inform you that the UA Sports Festival is coming up. Oh, I remember the festival, Seventh says excitedly. Aizawa finished his speech with so don't be an embarrassment. The man looks pointedly in Izuku's direction and the boy squawks. Hey, I'm not an embarrassment. The class goes silent and everyone turns to him awkwardly. Nobody talks. Everyone just stares at him, a touch surprised by his outburst. Aizawa raises an eyebrow and breaks the silence. And you're doing a great job proving yourself wrong. Izuku rolls his eyes dramatically but listens quietly anyway. So the sports festival will be. Hey ninth I've got a tip for you. Seventh says. Oh, he asks curiously. Don't get first place in the first tournament. So many times it has a drawback. Like when I was your age I had to wear weights on my ankles. Totally sucked. He thinks that over. Huh, yeah that's a good idea. But then his thoughts immediately go to the fame that comes with the festival. 
His father will be watching the festival. That's undeniable. He's going to scope him out, see what kinds of quirks he has. He needs to be smart about this. So when the hero course lesson is over he goes to the support class. He steps into the support classroom and is immediately hit by a wave of sawdust. He looks through the chaos and the loud clanging of machinery and sees a girl he vaguely recognizes. He steps up to her and taps on her shoulder to get her attention. She swings around with a large modified chainsaw in her arms. He jumps away from the blade, just barely avoiding it. She tilts her head in surprise who are you? She asks straightforwardly do you want to see my babies? Izuku blinks stupidly um. You have babies? The girl grins yep. She places the chainsaw in his hands excitedly. This is my newest baby. It works twice as fast as a normal one. Oh that's what you mean by babies. Izuku mumbles to himself before returning to his normal volume yeah. I'm here for some um babies I guess. Her eyes light up with excitement may Hatsum at your service. Why do you need? You're a little scrawny. She says deep in thought so maybe some kind of strength baby. Izuku flushes and mutters I don't know if scrawny is the right word. Hatsum hums her disagreement but doesn't push. But I do have some ideas for support gadgets. May grins perfect. Within an hour Izuku is fully decked out in all sorts of armor and gear, he can barely move. His goal is to win the festival using one for all in support gear, but none of his other quirks. The less information he gives his father the better, and besides, Mei is pretty cool. Hatsu may have taken to calling him scrawny but she's smart and intuitive. It's rare that Izuku feels comfortable sharing his ideas, a lot of people laugh them off anyway, but with Mei he can tell that she understands. The two of them pour over blueprints and various metals for a while before Izuku leaves with boots that fly, gloves with a built-in taser, and other nifty gadgets. Luckily everything is pretty compressed and subtle but just noticeable enough to cast doubt over what's a quirk and what's gear. Now that he thinks about it, gear is a good way to pass off his quirks from all for one is just equipment. Later that day, around 7 Izuku walks over to Bakugu's apartment. He walks up the stairs and stares at the silver number on the door. 205. He fights the urge to run over to his old apartment and chooses to knock on the door again. Masaru opens the door, looking just as overwhelmed as Izuku feels. Despite the man expecting him, he's still shocked. Izuku, oh my, it's so good to see you again. He smiles. Izuku looks around the apartment and he's way too aware of everything that has changed. The sofa that used to be against the wall has moved, and the carpet has been replaced. Masaru has a few more wrinkles and there are new pictures of Kakin that Izuku has never seen before on the shelf. But it still smells the same. Auntie is making katsudon. Spicy, just like Izuku likes it. His gaze drifts to the kitchen where Auntie is instructing Kakin on how to chop the onions until she sees him. She gasps and runs over to him. Her hands immediately grab his face as she studies him from head to toe. Izuku, gosh you've gotten tall, but you look unwell. You know you need to get your sleep. I've been telling the brat that but all of a sudden she stops and looks behind him. Where's Ko? I need to have a few words with her. You two just up and left. Izuku decides to cut. To the chase she's dead. Well, that's one way to rip the band-aid off. Six says awkwardly. From the kitchen you can hear Kakin dropping his knife as it clatters on the tile floor. Auntie's eyes are wide and unbelieving w what? I love you, you little shit, but you can't be lying like that. He's not lying. Kakin says from the kitchen and Mitsuki whirls around to gape at him. No, she whispers and Izuku nods. Four years ago, it was Endeavor. He speaks slowly as if he's trying to prevent glass from shattering. Masaru comes up behind Mitsuki and rubs her shoulders comfortingly. I'm so sorry Izuku. He says gently and Izuku feels awkward now. Um, it's cool. Like I said it's been four years so I'm kinda used to. He glances at Auntie and trails off. Tears prick her eyes. But Auntie never cries. The blonde woman clears her throat as she pulls herself together. You should have come to us, Izuku. Izuku glances at Kakin and sends him a look. The boy just shrugged helplessly. It's clear Auntie was not briefed on the bullying 10-year-old Izuku endured. Izuku just smiles though don't worry Auntie. It was hard but I made it work. Masaru raises an eyebrow you mean you didn't go to the foster system. Izuku snorts. Well, Masaru's funnier than I remembered. Huh, that's a good one. He says to the stupefied adults. He's not joking, Ninth Fifth says. He's not. Oh no, are you crazy? I'm registered as quirkless, they'd eat me alive. By the way, I got a quirk recently. That's been fun. He says casually. In the back he sees Kakin cackling in the background. Clearly amused at the sight of his stunned parents. Mitsuki and Masaru are pretty non-responsive. Looking like a real life blue screen. So Izuku walks over to the couch himself. Trust me, that isn't even the worst of it. He says with a grin. Boy, do I have a tale to tell. So over dinner Izuku gave them a heavily edited version of the truth. It's a story about a late bloomer who took over his mom's cafe and now got into a hero course after finishing his online courses. It's a shock to them but Izuku just smiles thinking of what they would think of the truth. A story about a vigilante with the two most powerful quirks in existence, son of a supervillain mastermind. 
Yeah, no, that wouldn't go over well. On the contrary I think it would go perfectly. Third says, shut up you just like drama. Second scolds, so, Sumi this is interesting. After the story things are pretty normal. Now that auntie is over the shock of Izuku being back she's back to her old ways. And I can't believe you never told me this brat. She scolds Katsuki. Masaru turns to the green-haired teen. So, how are your classes with the principal? I've heard he's eccentric. Izuku laughs that's an understatement. But he's cool. Kaken rolls his eyes. Of course you think he's cool nerd. Izuku chucks a dinner roll at him when auntie isn't looking. Masaru gives him a scowl but doesn't say anything. Oh and you don't. Izuku taunts. Of course I fucking don't. He's a weirdo. So you have no interest in the weirdo's predictions for the sports festival? Izuku asks with a smirk. Kaken freezes momentarily but shakes it off quickly I don't need any stinking predictions. Emma win. HM. Izuku says as he stares at the boy. Wadu means HM. I'm going to get first place. And you're gonna eat shit nerd. He stands and points to the boy to accentuate his statement. Hey, Masaru says quietly in protest to his son's language but Mistuki just laughs. You're too cocky brat. For all you know Zuku here could leave you in the fucking dust. Katsuki returns to his seat with a pout. I'm gonna kick your fucking ass. He mutters to Izuku who in return sticks his tongue out at him. Something tells me the festival won't go the way you want them to cack it. Izuku says cheerily, smacking Katsuki's fist away casually. At night Izuku invites Shoto over. He's grown fond of the boy's company, and to be honest he's a little nervous for the sports festival. He leads the boy up to his apartment and shows him the ladder that leads to the roof. The red and white-haired boy looks up in awe. I've never hung out on a rooftop before. He says quietly and Izuku gapes at him. Really, I'm always up here. It's so quiet. And it was quiet. The streets were mostly empty and with the chill of the wind not many people were outside. Shoto breathes out and the cold creates a small cloud from his breath. Are you scared? For the festival? He asks and Izuku nods. My father is going to be watching. There's a lot on the line. He says solemnly. Shoto nods in agreement. My father will watch too. He expects perfection. Izuku takes out a cigarette and offers it to the boy. He takes it and lights it with ease. The two look up at the stars as they smoke and Izuku asks his friend a question. What do you think would happen if we ran away? Shoto looks at him in surprise people would track us down. Why do you ask? Izuku chuckles leave it to you to be honest. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if everything at UA is going to collapse under my feet. And if that's the case, it's better to get out while I can. Izuku lays down on the cold concrete looking up at the hazy night sky. Shoto lays down next to him. These things are fragile. Izuku hums his agreement and Shoto continues. But it could become something incredible. What could? Our careers. Our quirks. Our relationships. Shoto explains. Family, Izuku. That's what all this could become. He turns to the other boy and smiles all of this could come crashing down around us. But maybe it won't. Izuku feels hope bloom in his chest. He's satisfied with that answer. Yeah, maybe. For a few minutes they sit there quietly watching the stars glimmering in the dark night sky. But then Shoto breaks the silence. I think your co-worker is my dead brother who died years ago. Izuku chokes on air and looks at the boy with wide eyes what? Shoto frowns slightly before turning to him. My older brother was named Taoya too. Izuku raises his eyebrows but lets the boy conti, and he's thought to be dead. I don't know if I believe that anymore. His eyes Izuku. They look the same. He has scars now, of course, but was said to have burned to death. What other explanation is there? He says, completely confident in his. Izuku sighs as he thinks about what he should say. Shoto has figured it out already. Yeah, you're right. Shoto's head snaps to him. What? I said you're right. Izuku says, giving him a sad look. Kaya Todoroki known in some circles by the alias Dabai. He faked his death a few years back. Shoto just blinks I am so smart. He says in a daze and Izuku giggles. I'm gonna be honest I'm glad you figured it out because I've been pestering him to tell you for weeks. He laughs and Shoto just stares at him. I need to speak to him. He says quietly. Maybe. Maybe he can come home. Izuku shakes his head though. I don't think that would work show. The boy frowns then we'd make our own home. He turns to his friend with a newfound fire in his eyes. All of us. Mom, Fayumi, Natsuo, and Taoya. We could do it. Izuku smiles yeah. You could. He leans up and looks down at the boy. Promise me something, Shoto. HM. Sure. Promise me you'll put yourself first. Shoto leans up and looks at him why. Just indulge me. No matter what happens, you should be safe. You need to stay safe, okay. Pinky promise. The boy shrugs and their pinkies intertwine. Shoto looks at Izuku. I pinky promise that I'll put myself first. Izuku smirks. I can't wait to tell Taoya that you figured it all out yourself. Shoto smiles just the tiniest bit and it makes Izuku feel like he's walking on air. He's going to be surprised. The next day Izuku spends the morning at the gym hitting the punching bag. As he hits one sand begins spilling out of it and Izuku sighs. That's the seventh one that broke. 
he says exasperated. Behind him he hears footsteps walking towards him so he turns around to see a racer. Hey, do you know if they have any sturdier equipment? Kinda exploded a few. He gestures to the trashed punching bags that littered the floor. Aizawa raises his eyebrows. Those are the sturdy ones. He looked at the damage Izuku inflicted on them and smirked clearly not steady enough though. Izuku frowns before he gets a wave of inspiration. Oh my god, bad idea. Aizawa cuts in quickly. Izuku scoffs. I haven't even said my idea yet. You don't need to. It's a bad one. Izuku rolls his eyes and packs up his gym equipment and gestures to Aizawa to follow him. This worked in Supergirl. Aizawa obviously doesn't approve of whatever Izuku is planning but he follows him anyway. You mean the old pre-quirk show? Uh-huh. Kara Danvers was a fucking genius. He leads the man to a junkyard full of worn-down old cars that's about a block away from the gym. He smiles and grabs one with relative ease. Holy shit. Aizawa exclaims don't what are you doing? Izuku smirks, getting something sturdier to punch. This is theft. The hero says but Izuku just shrugs. I'm putting it to better use than the junkyard would. He says as he walks down the sidewalk carrying a whole ass car. People on the street stare but nobody has enough courage to ask the teenager what he's doing dragging a car behind him at 5 in the morning. After some deliberation on how to fit the car inside the gym they finally find an angle that works. They successfully hang up the car as a replacement for a punching bag and Izuku grins. I'll be honest, I didn't expect this to work. Aizawa sighs well I did. Everything you do works out. Thanks. It's called plot armor. What? What? Anyway, are you here to convince me to not fight my maniac of a father to the death? He asks. He knew it was only a matter of time before they had this conversation. Izuku has to deal with all for one but Aizawa doesn't understand why. Aizawa leans against the gym wall and inhales sharply. I am indeed. You can't be thinking that this is smart. Izuku stares at the gym floor as he inhales. It's not smart, but it's necessary. Why? Aizawa pleads your 15 kid. You need to be taken care of. Izuku feels his chest constrict as he looks at the man with a smile. As much as I would love that eraser, I'm the only one who can do this. Aizawa scoffs your incredible Izuku. We both know this, but why does it need to be you? You may be his son, but you don't have any obligation to him. Oh I have every obligation to him. Izuku retorts angrily. That man causes chaos, and he inadvertently made the one person with the capability to stop him. Aizawa looks at the boy in size, and the one person is you. Izuku nods do you know what his quirk is eraser? Aizawa frowns I have theories. He shakes his head. They're all wrong. You see, I have my father's quirk, and it's something that no other soul can compete with. So it's me versus him. There's no stopping that sir. The man scowls watch me. I'm keeping you safe. I don't give a fuck about whatever mystery quirk you two may have. I'll stop this feud and you're going to stay unharmed. Izuku smiles. Oh, that's really nice actually. He rolls his eyes whatever problem child. Now, you've got a car to beat up. Izuku turns to his car, punching bag and smirks yes sir. You could cut the tension with a knife. Class 1A was sitting in their desks waiting for the bell to ring any minute for them to get in their costumes. But for now everyone is tense. Izuku sighs loudly breaking the silence oh my god I get that we're all nervous but geez it's like a fucking funeral in here with how gloomy it is. Language Izuku. Aizawa chastises lightly. I'm with the nerd here. I'll beat you all anyway there's no use being nervous. Bakugu grumbles. Izuku rolls his eyes unless I beat you. Momo tucks her hair behind her ear gracefully as she speaks or unless I beat you. Kakin turns to the girl Wadia say ponytail. I said that I will beat you. She says staying perfectly composed. Bakugu stands up and goes over to her you wanna bet. Jairo chimes in now 1000 yen on ya Momo. She calls out which ticks Bakugu off even further. Nobody's beating me. He roars. Now Shoto looks up 2000 yen on Izuku. Izuku looks at his friend and smiles oh that's nice. 2000 on Shoto. Soon enough almost everyone had placed a bet. Kakin's eye twitches as he turns to Aizawa aren't you going to do anything? Isn't this against the rules? Ida voices his agreement yes. This is very underhanded of you guys. Iraraka, who bet on Izuku, just shrugs, money is money dude. Ida turns to a racer to help but Aizawa just brings out his flask and takes a drink. I'm on a teacher's salary kid, I don't get paid enough to care. Izuku grins as he takes note of the bets. Six bets on Momo, four on him, three on Shoto, and one on Uraraka. Kakin doesn't get any bets. He says he doesn't care. Soon enough the bell has rung and the class bolts to the locker room to prepare for the festival. The flutter of nerves in everyone's stomach is still there but for the most part they feel more steady on their feet. Together class 1A walks onto the field hearing the screams from the stands echoing around them. Izuku doesn't know who decided that Kakin should say the opening speech but he fucking loves it. The boy states his thoughts plainly. I just want to say, I'm going to win. And people go batch it crazy. The stands roar with anger and excitement is in the air. Izuku laughs and laughs and eventually Kakin's attention is turned to him. 
Still standing in front of the microphone Kakan asks him what the fuck are you laughing about Deku. 1A turns to him but the rest of the crowd is left in confusion until Izuku speaks up. You've been saying you'll win since we were 4 Kakan. He says as he walks forward the cameras follow him closely. But I bet I'll beat you. Surprising everyone but Izuku, Katsuki doesn't get angry. Instead he just grins please. As if you could. Everyone is watching in baited silence waiting for a response from the other boy. Izuku returns his grin watch me. With that the crowd erupts into cheers. The clear competition between the two leaves the atmosphere exciting and thrilling. Izuku looks up to the announcer's box where Aizawa is shaking his head at him in disappointment but not surprise. He sends the hero a shit-eating grin and a peace sign feeling quite a bit of smug satisfaction for causing a ruckus. And with that present Mike takes the lead. Screaming into the microphone the man starts the festival. Who's ready to get started? He yells to the hyped up crowd. Kakan walks back down from the platform to the group of first year students. While Tenya chastises him for speaking like that on television. Izuku just walks up to him and holds up his fist. Katsuki looks at his outstretched fist then to Izuku. He smirks and meets the fist bump with a nod. Let's see who comes out on top. With his new equipment from May, Izuku is pretty confident. The only thing he needed to promise in exchange for the free gadgets was that he would gather attention and tell the cameras Hatsum's name. And our one and only Shoto Todoroki has cast an ice wall. Good thinking. Yamada's voice filters through the speakers. So Izuku flies forward just barely getting past Todoroki's ice wall. He waves to the dual-colored boy before chucking a heavy metal ball at him. Hatsum's ingenuity comes in handy again with a ball easy to throw but that packs a powerful punch. Well, we have some violence from 1A student, Izuku Midoriya. The boy is struck right in the shoulder and Izuku feels a twinge of guilt when his friend winces in pain. But this is a competition so he doesn't have time for sympathy. The boy sends a spike of ice that Izuku dodges as he yells out thanks for the boots Hatsum. Hopefully that's enough of a promotion for now, because Kakin is coming right up behind him. He smells the faint smoky scent and feels a wave of nostalgia hit him. The boy bolts in front of him but with a click of a button Izuku has tased him. He looks at the boy and winks smugly but he knows that the game is far from won. Kakan is screaming about where in the hell did you get a taser. And Izuku looks down to see Yamomo creating trampolines to jump from obstacle to obstacle. More violence. A taser. Support gear provided by our students here in 1H. Pretty amazing aren't they folks? But before he can deal with her Achako is next to him floating on a rock. He's about to shove her off but she speaks up before he can. Let's team up. She says looking extremely nervous and a little nauseous. He narrows his eyes skeptically. Why should we? Normally he'd be much warmer to his friend but at this point in the games everyone is his competition and he's not going easy on any of his classmates. Friend or not. For the next round. It's said that it'll probably be a team event. She was right. He considers this and nods. I'll deal with Shoto. You take Momo. Achako Yuraraka. Quirk. Float. Seems to be teaming up with Midoriya. How will these powerhouses work together? Mike says. She nods and flies down to wreck Momo's plans. By this point Shoto had gotten over the hit in the shoulder and was looking a little pissed to be honest. While approaching what looks to be a minefield it's clear what his strategy is. To stay just above the mines, skating to the finish line. Like hell Izuku's gonna let that happen. See, he was pretty prideful. And while he doesn't want to technically get first in this race he does want everyone to know that he could if he wanted to. So gathering up a shit ton of mines will have to do. With a little bit of time and a sheet of metal soon enough Izuku is hurtling through the air. Looks like to do no Bakugu is in the lead. Oh now yay Urazu oh now Bakugu again. This is a close race folks. Todoroki, Kakan, and yay Urazu are almost at the end when Izuku comes flying by. Looks like Midoriya is in the lead now. This boy sure keeps us on our toes. He sticks his tongue at the three of them just barely stopping before the finish line. He looks at the checkered end of the race and decides to sit crisscross applesauce a foot away. Wait, but what on earth is he doing? Yamada asks and he hears Aizawa huffing in the background. If there's one thing I've learned being Midoriya's teacher it's that if he does something, it's for a reason. Aizawa chimes in, sounding particularly smug today. He watches the confusion filter past the three faces. Yamomo is the only one who considers that Izuku might actually have a reason for not crossing. So she steps forward to Izuku and smiles. Winning this has a consequence doesn't it? She asks. Izuku smiles I knew I liked you. He says as a confirmation. He stands up and watches as Shoto and Kakan fight each other mid-air all whilst racing toward the end. Now Yeirazu has stopped as well. What's going on people? Izuku and Momo prepare themselves to time the ending just right. With a mutual understanding that the first place is unwanted, the next best thing is second. So after Kakan pulls ahead by just a centimeter the two of them leap toward the end. It's a clumsy pile of bodies. Izuku and Momo get crashed into by Shoto and somehow even Kakan gets wrapped up in the chaos. No one is quite sure who got what places so for now they're all just laughing at the predicament they got themselves in. 
Shoto looks very confused and is clearly wondering how on earth to get out. Kakan is screaming for someone to get off his leg and Momo is just shaking her head with a smile. Once the four of them get detangled they've gone through the tapes and figured out the order. Kakan got first place, and he's cackling in a way not too dissimilar to Nenzu. It's creepy but Izuku knows he'll regret it once whatever drawback inflicted on the first place winner happened. Momo got second place by a hair. She was pretty pleased with herself but turned to Izuku and smiled. I should thank you, she says but Izuku shakes his head. Not yet. We don't know if my theory is correct. Momo just laughs that off though. You'll be right, she says confidently. Izuku gets third place and he's very happy with that. It was clear to everyone that Izuku could have won if he wanted to. Shoto gets fourth and he looks nervously to the stands, looking for his father no doubt. Soon enough the glory of winning wears off and Kakan turns to Izuku in confusion why on earth did you just stay here you fucking idiot? What happened to bringing your all, ha? Huh? Izuku smirks trust me Kakan I'll win this. You're just a touch too thick to understand. He taunts his friend who elbows him sharply. Fucking nerd. You and Ponytail better fucking explain. He says gruffly as the rest of their classmates filter through the minefield and across the finish line. As Midnight explains the rules of the cavalry battle, Izuku can feel Kakan's glare on his back. He turns around, flips the boy off, then looks back to the front. He immediately makes eye contact with Yuraka and nods. Him, her, Takoyami, and Mei decided to be in a team and together they made a plan. Kakan has 10 million points so naturally everyone will be going after him. Not them though. We've gotta get as many points as we can before snatching Kakans. Izuku says and Yuraka nods. Yeah, 10 million would be nice but it's a make it or break it kinda number. We need a safety net of darkness. Takoyami says unnecessarily darkly. They hands out a few gadgets she's whipped together and they wait with bated breath for the announcement to ring over the field. W with a crack of midnight whip everything starts off with a bang. Yuraka's quirk plus maze gadgets make it relatively easy to float a few dozen feet above the ground. Together they wait. Sure enough everyone goes for the 10 million points. Izuku sees Momo's group from the corner of his eyes. He nods sharply. Now, moving as one they try to sneak behind the team. Unfortunately for them Shoto had kept his eye on Izuku since the beginning, clearly anticipating something like this. A wave of fire launched from the dual-colored boy chases them so they retreat to the sky. Yoraka looks a bit green from the strain though so they better hurry this up. Wei, Izuku says. With just a look the two communicate a plan. Hatsum grins and lifts her arm before snapping it down. To most people it looks like a random meaningless move but from a button on her bracelet comes a thin wire. With zoom and quirk Hatsum puts all her focus into controlling the wire and snatching the headband. In a matter of seconds the Shoto's headband has found a new place around Izuku's wrist. He smiles and high-fives Mei before the return to the ground, giving Achako a much-needed break from her quirk. The moment Todoroki notices his missing headband is obvious. The entire field feels a chill go down their spine as the boy goes straight for Izuku. But Izuku's team is already halfway across the field. Kakan is currently fending off a few different teams so Izuku sees what easy targets there are. He glances over and sees Hitoshi's team. Oh this is gonna be fun. A manic grin stretches across his face as he leads his team over to him. Hey Toshi. He calls to his friend while beaming. Izuku, you come here often. Out of habit Izuku was about to reply with something snarky but he snapped his mouth closed fast. He shakes his head to the boy. Takoyami. Rather than responding to Shinso, he speaks to his teammate. Dark shadow lashes out and grabs his headband easily. Shinso glares and turns to Takoyami and Mei, the only ones without knowledge of his quirk. What the fuck are you guys wearing? He asks aggressively, referring to the boots provided by Mei. There might be Mei jumps to the defense of her inventions. Shit. She goes limp and Izuku yells to Achako we need to leave her behind. Thankfully she doesn't ask for any explanation and within moments the remaining members of their team are in the air once more. He got her with his quirk. He says, whatever you do, say nothing to him. Yuraka, who already knew this, asks him about further plans. There's a minute left, do we go for Bakugu? Izuku scans the scene below and to his surprise there's a new competitor he needs to be wary of. No, we go after him. He points and Yuraka turns to him in confusion. Why him? Izuku grins you'll see. Izuku is eternally grateful for the trust Achako has in him. Nido Monoma. Quirk. Copy. While the smug blonde boy is going after the explosive blonde boy Izuku sneaks up behind him and grabs a head. It's not very many points but that doesn't matter. They have his attention. The boy turns and glares. Explosions come from his palms and Izuku grins. He got Kakan's quirk already as well as the 10 million points tucked safely around his neck, the label hidden from the competition. Monoma correct, he asks politely. He seems like the type to appreciate things like that. Yes, you're Midoriya. Izuku watches as the boy tries and fails to copy his quirk. Sheep imitations, he says to the boy. That's what they are. Sure enough this pisses him off. The group jumps at them but Dark Shadow just slaps them away. 
But the close proximity Izuku sees from the corner of his eye Uraraka touching the headbands with all five fingers. You know nothing of me. The boy hisses and sends a spike of ice to them. So he has Shoto's quirk too. Speaking of the red and white-haired boy he's seconds away from crashing into the two groups. Izuku's team jumps out of the way leaving Shoto's group to crash into Monoma. Uraraka focuses on the headbands and gently lifts them off the boy. She grabs them from the air, going completely unnoticed, and hands them to Izuku with a smug smile. Here you go Zu. Izuku grins at her thanks darling. The three of them see Bakugu running at them. It's obvious he's noticed his missing headband, courtesy of Monoma and blames Izuku. Uraraka elbows him playfully don't go flirting now, Himi will get jealous. She teases as she punches Katsuki in the nose causing him to hiss angrily. Izuku laughs that she will. Say what's up with you too. He says as he gives Siro a kick square in the nuts. Achako's eyes light up at the conversation topic. Ugh I don't know. She's so hot and cold. I mean she. Can we talk about your love life later? Takoyami cuts into the conversation curtly and Izuku feels his face go flushed with embarrassment. Um yeah sorry. He says as he looks around at the groups they're fighting realizing it's probably not the best time for talk of romance. Takoyami sighs as dark shadow throws Kirishima around like a plate. Bakugu roars at him what the fuck Deku. Take this seriously nerd. Izuku puts on his best puppy dog eyes. So crass Kakin. He taunts while dodging the boy's explosions. And time is up. Yamada's voice rings out through the stadium and Izuku sighs with relief. He turns to the screen and smiles when he sees his name on the top of the list with more than 10 million points. He climbs down from the shoulders of his friends and immediately runs to Mei. The girl who was just recently released from Shinzo's mind control looks pretty confused. What happened? Oh scrawny. How'd we do? She doesn't seem too concerned about it though. He smiles we won. Sorry about cutting you off though. There wasn't any other choice. Yes there was. Izuku knows there was another option. But honestly there was no way he was going to do that. Together the two of them walk back to the lockers where the classes are waiting for the next match to begin. Midoriya. That was awesome dude. Kaminari calls out to him from the other side of the room. It was cool. Siro says with a pained expression wish you hadn't gone for the balls though. Mina snickers please. That was the best part. Siro pushes her playfully and she rolls her eyes at him. Anyway Zu, I guess you knew about the 10 million point penalty. Izuku nods I had a feeling. Damn, you're so smart dude. Kakin huffs from where he's sitting in the corner he's not smart, he's just a coward. You were just scared of the 10 million. Izuku shrugs maybe. But where did starting with the 10 million get you? That's right, in third place. Kakin flips him off as Izuku takes a seat next to him. How's auntie? He asks. I feel kinda bad for dropping the orphan bomb then acting like it doesn't matter. Immediately eyes are on them. Shit Izuku did not plan for people to overhear that. Oh well, nothing to do about it now. She's shell shocked from your lack of tact. Kakin snorts. Seriously you walked in and said she's dead what the fuck were you expecting? The boy shakes his head she wants you over for dinner every week. Why at Kakin you know how busy I am. He whines but Kakin has no sympathy. Too bad, nerd. She's worried. And for good fucking reason I might add. Mina looks at the pair with curious eyes you're an orphan Midoriya. Izuku smiles at her you're the only one here with the guts to ask her. She looks a little startled at his nonchalance but she returns his smile anyway. Seems like it. You get more and more interesting with every passing day. He laughs trust me the Izuku Midoriya lore has a lot more to it than this. He sees himself gathering the attention of everyone in the room. Everyone's wondering the same thing. What is up with this boy? But yeah I am. A hero killed her if you can believe it. He speaks to the room now. Everyone's curious and Izuku is pretty relaxed about it. Really? Denki gasps who was it? Fucking endeavor. He spits out. Really but your Siro stops talking when Kirishima elbows him in the gut hey. It's clear what he was going to ask. But you're friends with Todoroki. He turns to look at Shoto and the boy just shrugs I don't associate with my father. Really? But why but before he can finish his question Yamada's voice comes through the loudspeakers announcing the beginning of the third event, saved by the bell. Izuku thinks gratefully. Are you ready to rumble? The man screams garnering cheers from the crowd. Izuku looks at his classmates with a smile. That's our cue. Izuku gets comfortable in his seat, waiting anxiously for the first match to start. He watches as Ayama and Ashido both step out of the hallway into the arena. The crowd goes wild with excitement and sounds of chanting echoes on the concrete walls. Izuku looks at the sparkly boy and looks him over. Chances are by now all for one knows he's a traitor. The only reason Ayama is still here is probably because of Izuku. If Ayama was working with anyone other than Izuku, all for one would have taken him out weeks ago. And thankfully Ayama seems very aware of that. He's been purposefully keeping his distance, which is smart of him, and he shows no intentions of running to all for one for a feeble attempt at safety. Win or lose he was out of all for one's good graces, so Izuku sighed in relief when Mina won their match. Nothing good can come from drawing unnecessary attention. 
And that's what this festival is all about, attention. After that he watched Momo beat Takoyami, Kirishima beat Tetsu Tetsu, and Bakugu beat Uraraka. Then it was his turn. He swallowed down his nerves and mentally prepared himself. Shinso is his opponent. He wasn't quite sure if that's a blessing or a curse. He steps into the arena with the most stoic face he can manage. When Shinso sees him he just scoffs what's up with your face dude. Izuku snickers but just sticks his tongue out at him. No way is he gonna give him a response. Really Zu, you're not gonna say one sarcastic comment. The boy taunts and Izuku is slightly offended that these are the tactics Shinzo's trying. Fine, guess you're just a bitch. Izuku's head whips around to Hitoshi but the boy's expression is completely controlled and apathetic. Maybe you do have something in common with your villain of a father. Whoa, that's fucking low. Izuku stares at the boy with wide eyes. He bites back a retort opting instead for a punch to the jaw. The crowd audibly gasps as the crack of fist connecting with bone is heard, and Midoriya has once again resorted to violence. Mike announces. Shinzo stumbles backwards, clearly not anticipating that response. He swings at him recklessly but Izuku dodges and kicks him in the leg. He hears a snap of a bone breaking that brings him back to reality. Shit, Shinzo is out of the arena and his knee is not supposed to turn that direction. Izuku's hand goes up to his face as bile rises in his throat. A medical team walks over to them and they help Hitoshi up. Izuku rushes to his friend oh my god, Hitoshi I'm so sorry. Shinzo just shakes his head with a wince. And no I provoked you I used dirty tactics. He says with a tense voice due to the pain. Izuku walks with him. Still, I knew you were trying to piss me off and I let it get to me. I'm so sorry, I just got so mad and I like saw red or something. Izuku. The boy's tone causes Izuku to turn to him. Yeah, you did a good job. You won. But Izuku starts to protest but then recovery girl pipes up. I'm sorry honey, but you'll have to continue this conversation later. Shinzo has to recover. The woman says sweetly. Izuku returns to the locker room. He leans against the wall and slides down dramatically like people do in movies. His father's words from a few days ago echo in his head. I'd wager you're more like me than you give yourself credit for. Fuck that. He hears the click of heels and when he looks up to the doorframe he sees midnight. Hey Zuku, whatcha doing in here? She asks him with a sad expression on her face. He pouts pathetically I'm moping. The woman chuckles I can see that. Is it because of her match? He groans yeah. Do I even want to know how much of our conversation the mic picked up? She sighs as she sits next to him. It was all audible. Izuku knocks his head back against the metal locker. Fuck. He snaps. So everyone knows now. Midnight looks at him with pity in her eyes. They do. But hey, it's not that big of a deal. Heroes with villain parents are more common than you'd think. That's not why I'm concerned. He tells her. Do you? He shakes his head as he feels the burn of tears gathering in his eyes. Never mind. No, I want to hear your question. She prompts him gently. Am, am I violent? He asks as the tears stream down his cheeks. Oh honey. The woman's voice washes over him like cool water as she puts an arm around him. Absolutely not. You want to hear a story? She asks. He nods and she continues. I met you a few years back. Now, you don't know this but Shota was very concerned about you. Izuku's confusion is evident on his face. Really? Kayama nods MMHM. You were a kid with no parental supervision as far as we could see. And he didn't want to pry, but he wanted you to be safe. She explains. So every day me, him, and Yamada would come to the Evergreen in shifts. Sometimes we even bribed our co-workers to help out. She says smiling at the memory. Izuku gapes at her what? I never noticed. She taps his nose with a grin of course you didn't. That was the point. Anyway, do you remember the day the man showed up with a gun and tried to rob you? Izuku thinks for a moment which time. Which you know what, that's a conversation for later. You were 11, maybe 12. It was my shift that day. I was counting on you to let him take the money, so he wouldn't get agitated even further. But you, you spoke to him. And what's even more amazing than that is the fact that you got through to him. She takes a breath and looks at the boy she's grown familiar with over the years. I've gotta tell you kid in the decade that I've been a hero. I've never been able to de-escalate a situation as expertly as you did. She tells him. You had many options that day. But you choose the most peaceful one. So no. She tucks Izuku's hair behind his ear as he wipes a tear from his face. You're not violent. Not one bit. He gives her a wobbly smile before speaking. I met him for the first time a few days ago, you know. My dad. Her eyebrows raise. No, I didn't know. He said we were alike. OPSH. Midnight scoffs what does he know? You said it was the first time you've met him. How should he know then? Izuku takes a breath. You know what, you're right. Hell yeah I am. Midnight exclaims. I'm gonna prove him wrong. He says as he jumps to his feet. You do that. She encourages. I'm gonna go beat up Endeavor. He calls as he makes his way out the locker room. Yeah wait Izuku no. Midnight calls as she runs after him. Izuku yes. He yells back as he runs back to the stairs leading up to his seat. He looks at class 1A and it's immediately obvious everyone heard the entire match. Hey I guys. He says quietly. 
Nobody says anything and it's an awkward standoff until Bakugu speaks up. Stop being so fucking weird you guys. His dad's the villain, not him. Mina chokes on air a little bit Bakugu. You can't just say stuff like that. She says with wide eyes looking from Kakin to Izuku. Izuku smiles though it's okay, I don't mind. Kakin's not wrong anyway. He sits down next to his volatile friend and offers a bit of an explanation. It's just a bit more of my Izuku Midori allure. He says in a light tone. But why did the purple-haired guy say that? Like that's so rude. Siro asks. Don't blame Toshi. It's because of his quirk. Izuku says. Even though in truth he's not sure if he's entirely over it himself. Did you really break his leg though? Denki asks now that the ice is broken. Izuku winces. I. Oh I did. Again there's silence. I know what you're thinking. He says. No one's thinking anything. Uraraka squeaks with her voice an octave too high. Izuku laughs of course you are. Who wouldn't? Villain's son with a strong quirk who broke someone's leg with a single kick. I know how it looks. He says as he turns around in his seat to look at his classmates. He smiles brightly at them but I'm gonna be a hero. So suck on that dad. He says cheerily. Oh so who is your dad? Kirishima asks is he famous? Or strong? Izuku winks at the boy classified. Sorry. Wait really? Oh that is so cool. That's not cool. It's probably for a scary reason. But he got to say classified in a serious conversation. You can't tell me that's not cool. So as the topic of conversation moves on to other things Izuku steals himself for his next match against Shoto. Speaking of, where is Shoto? He excuses himself as he leaves to look for his friend. Izuku watches from behind a corner as the fiery man yells at the timid intern. What do you mean, I can't go in there? You know who I am, right? Why yes sir, but it's... Lubu it's its endeavor mocks her stuttering before moving past her I don't care. Izuku takes a breath before stepping out into the hallway. Excuse me sir. He paints his voice sugary sweet as he speaks are you looking for the UA students? Because they're down this way. He points down where there are most definitely not UA students. But it's secluded. A good place to throw a punch or two. At least someone here knows fucking manners. The man grumbles under his breath. The intern Endeavor was harassing looks to Izuku with a panicked look in her eyes. The question is evident. What are you doing? UA students aren't that way. He gives her a reassuring smile, trying to convince her that he has a plan. He does have a plan right. Well shit. HM, at least he's pretty good at improv. He walks with Endeavor down the hallway for a reasonable distance before he's sure that they're alone. He stops in his place and in a second Endeavor has whirled around to face him. Why have you stopped? The fuck? You won't find your son here in G. His brain forms a rough plan. First, take his quirk and break a few bones. Then return his quirk and go back to the class. Then when the number two hero is found broken and bloodied nobody will believe it's the work of an innocent teenager. Huh. The man leans forward what kind of bullshit is this? I need to speak to Shoto. He roars loudly. Light footsteps come from behind him and Izuku hears a voice cut through the quiet hallway. Why do you need to speak to me father? Izuku turned around and made eye contact with his friend. He sucks in a breath and shakes his head. You shouldn't be here, Shoto. Well, can't break any bones now that he's here. His friend looks at him then to his father. Care to explain why you're harassing my friend? Your friend, Endeavor spits out incredulously this fucker. Izuku smirks at the angry man as he imagines what he would look like with his jaw smashed in. Shoto just meets his eye head on. Yes, he is my friend, and you're not allowed to be here, father. Leave. The man growls under his breath and pushes past Izuku to leave. You better watch yourself brat, he says through gritted teeth. Izuku feels a little cocky. That's never good. He stares at the floor as he speaks quickly and quietly. Stupid says what? Next to him Shoto looks confused and Endeavor looks back at Izuku. What? Oh nothing bye bye stupid Izuku grabs Shoto's wrist and runs as fast as he can without tearing his friend's limb off. When they reach the crowd Shoto is out of breath and red faced. What just happened? He asks and Izuku smiles. When life gives you lemons, you squeeze them to get the juice in your father's eyes. He says breathless and giddy from laughter. I mean yeah, Shoto says in confused agreement, but why were you back there? squeezing the juice. Izuku explains with a vague wave of his hand. Anyway, it's about time for our fight to the death, yes, fight to the unconscious, not death. Shoto corrects as they walk to the hallway that exits into the arena. Izuku shrugs, potato, potato. He looks up to see Tenya fighting a girl with vines for hair. He nudges his friend looks like we're up next. So now the two of them are standing in the arena with the sounds of cheering surrounding them. Izuku grins and Shoto feels a chill run down his back. You see, while he was friends with Izuku, he held no illusions about the boy's talent and pure strength. Shoto Todoroki vs Izuku Midoriya The son of our number two hero is pitted against his friend, a boy who's become quite famous as of late. Who will win? From the moment Izuku Midoriya stepped into Class 1A he had gathered everyone's fascination, and the intrigue he possesses hasn't gone down one bit. Every move he would make just screamed danger, and Shoto was curious. 
When the cryptid confessed to being a popular vandal and a fellow Endeavor hater, Shoto took a liking to him. The arena grows cold as Shoto freezes the ground in an attempt to keep the boy in place. Elsa, how could you? Izuku whines in his fake offended tone. He stomps on the ground, shattering the ice surrounding him easily. Shoto sends a billowing flame his way but before he knew what was happening Izuku was flying 20 feet in the air, courtesy of Hatsum, no doubt. The freckled boy holds out a fist and Shoto can see what is going to happen as clear as day. Sure enough Izuku flicks his finger and a burst of wind hits him, rendering his flames practically useless. Within moments Shoto is incapacitated and unable to move. He sighs, having known full well what was coming. I conceded, and Izuku Midori is our winner. The crowd roars, having wanted a more action-packed show. Present Mike screams into the microphone but Shoto just looks at Izuku. He's holding out his hand to help Shoto up, which he takes gratefully. His friend sighs with exhaustion. Are we done yet? He whines and Shoto huffs out a laugh. I am, but you still have Yeda to go against. Izuku places his head on Shoto's shoulder. God, kill me now. That would be very good for your health now, would it? Shoto retorts to which Izuku flicks his forehead playfully. The class watches as Kakin absolutely obliterates Kirishima. Now, don't get him wrong, Izuku likes Kiri. He's fun, encouraging, and overall a cool guy. But there was no chance in hell he was getting in the way of Bakugu Katsuki getting to the finals. Izuku cheers for both of his classmates as he waits for his match with Tenya. He glances over at him and sees him staring at him. Like watch a see Tenya. Izuku teases and much to his amusement Eder rolls his eyes. Stop that Izuku. He scolds and Izuku laughs. Did you just roll your eyes? Izuku gasps oh my god. Tensei is going to be so proud. He says as he places a hand on his chest. Izuku turns to his friend with a nervous bubbly feeling in his chest no hard feelings after this fight right. Ada gives him a chastising look I'm not five Izuku. I'm no sore loser. I hope you won't be either. Izuku grins how should I know. I never lose. And sure enough, that claim remains true. Within a few minutes Ida is unconscious on the concrete stadium arena. He waves to the cameras with a smile as present Mike introduces the next fight. Him versus Bakugo. The crowd goes crazy as they remember the two's competitive nature they have with each other. Izuku looks around and catches scarlet eyes. Kaken smirks and Izuku feels the anticipation growing in his gut. This is going to be fun. In a matter of seconds Kaken is standing across from him. Izuku Midoriya versus Katsuki Bakugo. These two each pledge to win in the beginning of the festival, with Bakugo winning the first event and Midoriya winning the second. Let's see who comes out on top. He looks at his childhood friend with a smile. You realize if I win I'm winning dozens of bets we made over the years right Kaken? Kaken narrows his eyes at him the same goes to you Deku. After all your talk, now's the time to show off your stupid talent nerd. Izuku gasps and smiles softly I knew you knew I was talented, he says in a slight mocking tone. He grins giddily and Kaken rolls his eyes. Whatever, Kaken gets himself in his fighting stance. Come at me bitch, happy to oblige. Izuku runs at him and feigns a punch before kicking. Kaken dodges the blow and explodes him right in the stomach. Izuku stumbles to the ground as he taps a button on his wrist. Tiny wires shoot from his bracelet and if he's very careful he'll be able to capture Kaken. Unfortunately the boy spots the wire and scoffs you fucker. Izuku smirks and sends a low kick in the direction of his distracted friend. He hits his ankles and Kaken hisses in pain. An explosion singes Izuku's hair and the scent of smoke surrounding them. Back and forth the two spar, dodging, blocking, and hitting each other with fierce precision. Izuku carefully watches their position in the arena and he slowly corners Kaken. With a well-placed punch Kaken skids back a few inches and present Mike calls the match over. Katsuki Bakugu is out of bounds. Izuku Midori is our winner of the 2XXX US Sports Festival. Izuku tilts his head cockily with a smile told you so Kaken. The boy shoves him lightly please, you just won on a fucking technicality. You could never truly beat me bitch boy. Izuku raises his eyebrows and fists oh you wanna bet. Kaken glares at him with a wild look in his eyes fuck ya yeah, nerd. He says as he leaps at his friend for a rematch. And now they are fighting again. Aizawa sighs over the loudspeaker. Bakugu and Midoriya, you two need to stop being temperamental. He says to the both of them and the boys look up at the announcer's box. Act that's unfair. Izuku says as he dodges a right hook. I'm not fucking temperamental. Kaken shouts to a racer. Pretty soon there are heroes separating the two. Izuku pouts, sad that his fun was ruined. Kaken seems to have a similar feeling as he bites the person trying to pull him back. Eventually Izuku just starts laughing at the distressed teachers you guys don't get paid enough to deal with us do you? He asks Ectoplasm. Ectoplasm sighs no, we do not. He says as he drags the teenage boy to the award ceremony. Standing on the platform Izuku is way too aware of just how many people are watching the sports festival. He vaguely registers someone telling him that the commercial break is over and that it's almost time for his speech. I have to say a fucking speech. 
He asks Kakin who's standing next to him on the second place platform. Huh. Kakin cackles karma. Momo, who's third place, sighs we're live, guys. She chides and Izuka's mouth falls open. Like, we're live right now. He asks incredulously and Midnight rolls her eyes as she points to a camera with a blinking red light. Though, when they get there, he laughs sheepishly. Hi, I'm Izuku Midoriya. I just am won the sports festival. That's a cool I guess. He starts to laugh again I am sorry I didn't prepare a speech. Luckily for him Kakin steps in holy shit nerd. Can you be any more embarrassing? Izuku flips him off before turning back to the camera to collect himself. Um, I guess I just want to say that no matter what people tell you, you can be a hero too. No matter whether or not you have a quirk, you can still kick ass. He grins and then remembers his promise to Mei. Also Mei Hatsum has great gadgets. So, like, contact her or something. Okay, bye. Plus Ultra. He waves to the camera as someone yells cut. Kakin turns to him you motherfucker. Izuku cringes as he faces his friend. Please tell me it wasn't as bad as I think it was. Kakin cackles evilly it was so much worse than I was expecting. Izuku buries his face in Kakin's arm. I said that winning the sports festival was cool I guess I'm never going to be able to show my face in public ever again. Millions of viewers Deku. Millions. The blonde boy says with a grin. Momo comforts Izuku don't worry Midoriya. I bet lots of people found your nerves endearing. She encourages. Izuku scowls at Katsuki at least I have one real friend. He says as he wraps his arm around Momo's shoulder. So, who wants to go get victory dinner? Momo smiles that sounds wonderful. Sounds like a literal nightmare. Kakin snarks but Izuku grabs his collar before he can walk off. Even if it's spicy curry. He offers, knowing the boy won't be able to refuse. Bakugu halts in his step and rolls his eyes. Fine, I'll give you one hour. One, yeah, victory dinner. Momo cheers as the three of them walk off the field and over to where their excited classmates are waiting for them. Victory dinner ended up being a lot more packed than Izuku expected. Hiroshima, Denki, Mina, and Siro wanted to join Bakugu so they tagged along. Hiroraka, Shoto, and Asui also show up but unfortunately Tenya got a call and had to go. Mei Hatsum also joined, seeming ecstatic about the amount of exposure she got from Izuku's speech. Jiru was there with Momo and Izuku is pretty sure there's something going on between them. But honestly he's a little distracted because of the absence of another purple-haired friend of his. He hasn't seen Shinzo since he broke his leg and he's a little anxious about it. He's probably feeling guilty for telling everyone his father is a villain. He should, Fifth says gruffly and Izuku doesn't know how he feels about that. He returns his attention to his friends where the Baka squad is debating whether or not weed is a vegetable. It's a leafy plant. Denki holds up a picture with his phone as he argues you're telling me this isn't a vegetable. Are you serious? Are you fucking kidding me Dun's face? Kakin roars how stupid do you have to be to call pot a fucking vegetable? Denki sighs exasperated and turns to Achako what do you think? You're on my side, right? Achako has a glimmer in her eye and Izuku knows exactly where this is going. She pulls out a baggie from her hoodie pocket it can be a vegetable for 6,000 yen. Siro's jaw drops to the floor oh fuck yeah. Izuku laughs she's going to drain your bank accounts, you know that right? Achako smiles as Siro and Denki count up their cash it's a lucrative business, what can I say? Izuku grins as your Raka pockets the cash you're like the fucking onsular. A woman can only dream. She winks, you're a drug dealer. Momo asks with her jaw practically on the floor. Izuku smirks, having known about this part of his friend's life for quite some time. Achako Yuraka is quite the anomaly. She's the sweetest girl you'll ever meet, and she never says a bad word about anyone. She's the last person you'd expect to have an illegal side gig, but she has bills to pay, and things to take care of. So when an opportunity presented itself she took it. So here she is. A great mind for business and a surplus of charisma makes her a talented saleswoman. Yuraka nods to her friend. We can't all be born with a silver spoon. She explains as she hands over the drugs to Denki. Huh, I never would have expected that pink cheeks, Kakin says gruffly. Anyway, isn't this a victory dinner? She asks the table let's celebrate our victors. Attention turns to Izuku and he blushes at their stares. Luckily Kakin is more than happy to take the spotlight. Why are y'all looking at Deku? He just won because of a stupid technicality. Still won though. Speaking of, I think it's time for the losers of the bet to cash up. Hiroraka beams. Izuku pays her, having bet on Shoto, thanks for betting on me. She scoffs purely strategic. You were always going to win, you knew that. Izuku smiles, because in all honesty he isn't surprised with his win, this was planned. You make me sound cocky. She grins as the others pay her, Asui, and Shoto for the bets. You say that as if it's undeserved. 